Chapter 652 Tied by Destiny and Evelina Vitrova and Young Jean Liwei Special Part 5 When Jean Liwei arrived at the scene, the performance had already ended and most of the crowd was in the midst of dispersing. The people looked elated as they gushed about the exciting performance they just witnessed, with some still continuing to sing, We Will Rock You, by themselves. Jean Liwei and the other new arrivals felt disappointed that they missed the show but didn't dwell on it too much. After all, they hadn't experienced the performance firsthand so they didn't know what they missed. Hey, Liam. He saw his friends and their girlfriends on the other side of the street waving at him. After joining the group, he greeted them with a nod before keeping a distance from the girls. His coldness became more pronounced in the presence of the girls. Everyone could only give a wry smile at his cold reception. They were already used to it, anyway. Did you just arrive, Liam? Yes. Sorry for being late. Nah. Don't worry about it, bro. We were watching an amazing street performance just now. The pianist was the bomb. That babe so gorgeous and talented. I wanted to talk to her and ask for her number or something. But too bad her guy friends pulled her away before anyone could even have a chance to approach and speak to her after the performance, said one of his friends who didn't have a girlfriend just like him. Hmm, Jean Liwei was no longer interested in the performance he missed, especially after hearing his friends raving about the female pianist's appearance. The pianist must have relied on her good looks to attract the audience's attention. Why else would his friends focus so much on her appearance instead of the actual performance? He was the type of person who didn't give a damn about how a woman looked like. There were so many females who kept on trying to seduce him with their beauty but he remained unaffected. He appreciated intelligence, abilities and skills more than personal appearance. But even if someone was intelligent, talented and skilled, it wasn't a guarantee that he would be attracted. Jean Liwei was already an adult yet hadn't felt lust yet since the day he was born, unlike men his age who could only think about the next girl they wanted to fuck. Sure, he would wake up in the morning with a hard-on now and then but those were natural male physiological responses and not because he was having wet dreams about a certain woman. He hadn't yet met a woman who could stir his sexual desire. He was already beginning to think that he would never feel sexually attracted to another person for the rest of his life. Perhaps he was someone called asexual. Not that he cared much. His thoughts were interrupted by his friend. Hold on. I took some photos and videos of the hot pianist. I'll show you. No need. Let's go to the restaurant now, Jean Liwei interjected but his friend was already checking his phone. Eh. I'm sure I took several photos and videos but why are they all gone? Was I mistaken? Or did I accidentally delete all of them? You're so silly. Don't you know how to use your own phone? Here, I also took some photos and videos, huh? Wait. Where are they? Why is there none? Those who recorded the street performance earlier all checked their phones. There were no photos or videos. They all mysteriously disappeared. This so weird. Did all of us press the wrong button or something? Comma. Inside a car driving away from the university, Evelina closed her laptop and placed it on the seat beside her. A delicate sigh escaped from her lips. Although she felt exhilarated and touched that so many people enjoyed her performance earlier that they even recorded it, she had no choice but to hack into their devices and delete all the photos and videos they took of her. A handful of them had even already posted the recordings on social media but fortunately, she was able to remove the photos and videos before they had a chance to spread on the internet. There was no helping it. She was a Vetrov and the Vetrovs weren't allowed to leave any evidence of their identities behind. They had an enormous number of enemies always waiting for the opportunity to take them down. And she, the least trained, effectively making her the weakest in combat among the Vetrovs, was the easiest and most scrumptious target in the organization. It was fortunate that not a lot of information was released to the outside world about her, primarily due to her family's painstaking protection. 
Once again, unwillingness to live this kind of secretive, purposeless life with no freedom threatened to overwhelm Evelina but she forced the feeling down to the deepest recesses of her heart. It would only make her depressed if she nurtured this kind of feelings. At least, she had music, computers, and the internet as a temporary escape to her dreary life. And most importantly, she had her big brother. If not for his love and care, she might have already given up life a long time ago. Leaning her head against the window and watching the scenery passing by, Evelina remembered the wonderful feeling of performing earlier. She had never felt so alive. It was what she had always dreamed of. A sad smile darkened and lightened her expression at the same time. She might not be able to achieve her dreams but at least she had the opportunity to have a taste of it today. Also, she saved all those recordings she deleted from the crowd's devices for her own use, so that she could view them later and relive the amazing feeling of performing in front of an enthusiastic audience. This is enough, she forced herself to believe and then closed her eyes, you're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 653 Tied by Destiny and Evelina Vitrova and Young Jean Liwei Special Part 6 The next day, Jean Liwei didn't have any classes but still busied himself by spending the entire morning in the emptiest library in the campus to work on his assignments in peace. He had been very absorbed in what he was doing when he realized that he was missing one of the books in his required reading list. Sighing, he consulted the librarian before heading to the upper floors to hunt for the lone textbook. There was a distinct old and stale smell in this part of the library due to the lack of air circulation. He didn't mind it, though. In fact, he felt comforted by it. He thought that he would be the only one here today but was surprised to hear the presence of another person. There was someone singing in a light voice at the topmost floor. He was one floor below. Frowning in disapproval, he climbed the stairs to reprimand whoever it was who had the gall to disrupt the peaceful silence. This was a library, not a damn karaoke bar. The sound of singing grew clearer when he reached the top floor. His irritation changed into interest when he realized that the singing actually sounded nice. No, it wasn't just nice. It was actually quite beautiful. Although it sounded light and soft, the voice was crystal clear and the melody flowed like a calm, mystical river. The high notes all reached the right spots as well. Jean Liwei didn't speak Italian but he could recognize the language once he heard it. The person who he still couldn't see from his position was singing a heartfelt Italian aria. He wasn't familiar with the song nor could he understand the lyrics, but it didn't matter. He could feel the passion, yearning, and loneliness through the singer's interpretation as if they were his own. The disapproval he felt earlier had already disappeared, replaced by a need to listen to the song until the end. Not wanting to startle the singer, he stayed put in his current position by the top of the staircase. He leaned against a concrete column and closed his eyes, enjoying the beautiful Italian aria. Time passed by and the two figures remained in their own positions. One sang, the other listened. Both were aware of the other's presence but chose not to disturb or acknowledge each other. They couldn't see what the other person looked like because of the tall bookshelves separating them, but right at that moment, the two felt a connection because of the song. The one singing always appreciated someone who listened to her song. The one listening appreciated the rare someone who could make him stop and listen despite his busy schedule. When the song ended, Jean Liwei was dazed. This was the first time that he felt so relaxed since he started studying in university. It had been such a long time. Even a good full body massage was incomparable to the relaxation he was experiencing right now because of the song. Was the mysterious singer a hypnotist as well? Don't you know that it's rude to eavesdrop on someone, a calm female voice spoke in a British accent all of a sudden, comma. Jean Liwei wasn't surprised by the foreign accent. The university catered to many foreign students from different countries all over the world. He was one, too. The voice was soft and had a lovely lilt to it yet was still clear enough for Jean Liwei to hear from several meters away. 
He was unsure from which specific bookshelf the voice's owner was located, but from the looks of it, she was on the other side of where he was supposed to search for the textbook that he needed. Don't you know that it's rude to make a noise inside a library, he retorted. A light, lovely chuckle tinkled like crystal bells. It made him shiver with an indescribable feeling that he had never experienced before. He was too confused by the feeling of his lower abdomen tightening that he didn't notice that his heart skipped a beat. In the end, he concluded that what he was feeling was annoyance. Right, I was originally annoyed before her singing distracted me. Yes, I'm annoyed, he inwardly told himself. Was my singing so horrible that you treat it as noise? The female voice asked in a curious tone. Jean Leeway frowned. He didn't like to waste his time explaining himself to a stranger, but for some reason, he couldn't bear to let her think that her singing was horrible. You misunderstand. You sang well. She didn't immediately reply, making him think that she had decided to ignore him. He was about to head to the opposite direction to start searching for his book when she finally replied. Thank you. You're welcome. He didn't realize that there was a faint smile on his lips. With that, the two no longer spoke to each other. They went their separate ways and had tossed this incident to the back of their minds. Behind a bookshelf, Evelina Vitrova knew when the man she spoke with earlier left the floor with her great hearing. She closed the book in her hand and returned it to the bookshelf before standing up from the step stool she was sitting on. Are you done, my lady? her bodyguard asked beside her. She nodded. I want to take a walk outside. I need some fresh air. Understood. Please wait for a moment. Another bodyguard appeared from seemingly out of nowhere and the two partners did a thorough check on the vicinity before escorting her down to the main floor. Her appearance caught the attention of the librarian and the handful of people studying in the library. She was just too beautiful and eye-catching to miss. Back on his desk, Jean Leeway also looked up and followed everyone's gazes. He caught a glimpse of an attractive blonde woman before she disappeared outside. Something flickered inside him but nothing too significant for him to notice, so he didn't think much of it and resumed his studies, you're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 654 Tied by Destiny and Evelina Vitrova and Young Jean Leeway Special Part 7 Later in the afternoon, Jean Leeway met with his friends by the river closest to the university's business school. They planned on driving to downtown Boston to find something fun to do and maybe eat dinner along the way or even hang out in a pub later in the evening. His friends were currently in a fierce arm wrestling competition. The winner would be riding with Gene Leeway in his limited edition luxury sports car. The others would have to squeeze themselves in their other friends' more normal and older cars. While his friends were roaring like battle crazed gladiators, Gene Leeway was busy working on something on his laptop. He was checking on the performances of his stock portfolios and other investments. Although he was being groomed as the successor of Gene Corporation, it wasn't a guarantee that that he would become the next president CEO after his father. In the end, it would still all come down to his own skills, abilities, and accomplishments. Gene Corporation prioritized skills, abilities, and accomplishments over blood ties. This was evident in the fact that there was currently nobody from the Lu family who held high positions in the company despite Grandpa Lu's influence. Also, most members of the Lu family inherited a my pace personality. They were usually happy go lucky fellows who liked to do things their own way and didn't care much about what other people thought of them. As a result, only a few of them were interested in working at Gene Corporation. Most of them chased after their own dreams and happiness, like Gene Leeway's fifth brother. Lu Ziheo was currently living in Toronto and studying in a Canadian university. However, his grades were barely passable because he was spending most of his free time traveling all over Canada, and during vacations, in other countries, in search for the most thrilling and dangerous ski slopes in the world. It wasn't only skiing that Lu Ziheo was crazy about. Any extreme sports like parachuting, street car racing, free ice climbing, 
to name just a few, were all up Luziheo's alley. He had no interest whatsoever in working at Gene Corporation. Ever. Just the thought of working a corporate job was enough to make him shudder in fright. Unlike his devil-may-care fifth brother, Jean Liwei's goal was to succeed his father and become the next president CEO of Jean Corporation. Running a business was what he was most passionate about, and of course, preserving the legacy of grandfather Jean and grandpa Lu for generations to come. He was born to reign over this massive business empire. That was why he spared no expense in honing himself as a successful business leader. Not only were his school marks top-notch but his other accomplishments were all impressive as well. He already built a considerable wealth on his own even before formally entering Gene Corporation. If he planned on becoming the company's next president CEO, he must go above and beyond Gene Corporation's already high standards and dominate the entire competition in order to leave no doubt in everyone's minds that he was the perfect person for the job, comma. Back to the present, Gene Liwei made some changes on his investment portfolios according to his own personal forecast of the market. To the side, the arm wrestling competition between his friends was heating up. It was the final round. Everyone in their group was too preoccupied to notice a little girl about five to seven years old running in their direction. She held a leash with both of her hands and was being pulled by an overexcited golden retriever puppy. Before the guys could even realize what was happening, the puppy and the girl had already both crashed into Jean Liwei and a couple of their other friends. Jean Liwei's laptop and a few other objects like soft drink cups and chips lay in a heap on the concrete ground. The laptop screen cracked a little but the device seemed to be still working. As for the girl and her puppy, it was a good thing that Jean Liwei managed to block her head from hitting the bench with his arm while the puppy was caught by his friend beside him. However, the crash was still painful. It was no surprise that the girl and the puppy began wailing and crying together. The group of guys had no idea what to do and so they began to panic. They looked around for the girl's parents or guardians but they couldn't see anyone. Fuck, what should we do? Watch your language. She's a kid. Oh shit, my bad. Oops. Sorry. I'll just shut up now. They tried comforting the crying little girl and her puppy. Someone told lame jokes while another made funny faces. Surprisingly, they were effective and the little girl started giggling while still crying. Then she told them that her puppy made her run so fast that they lost her parents somewhere. They had no choice but to accompany the little girl and the puppy while looking for her parents. A few minutes later, her frantic parents finally found them. Thank you, big brothers. The friends felt good and proud of themselves after helping an adorable little girl. Except for a certain cold-faced guy, everyone chatted with the girl and her parents and played with the cute puppy. Let's give her a candy or something. They all patted their pockets and bags looking for a treat but failed to find anything. Disappointed for their lack of preparation, all they could do was wave at the family goodbye. But then a certain cold-faced guy whipped out a neat pack of mints and wordlessly handed it to the little girl. For me, she asked. Jean Liwei nodded. Thank you, handsome big brother. He nodded again, stiffly this time, because he didn't know how to interact with children. His friends teased him for being a surprise mister. Nice guy but he ignored them to check his laptop instead. For some inexplicable reason, an Italian aria sung by a beautiful voice began playing in his mind as he examined his cracked computer, you're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 655 Tied by Destiny and Evelina Vitrova and Young Jean Liwei Special Part 8 When the family left the area by the river, the little girl was scolded by her parents, making her very sad. It wasn't her fault that she and her puppy got lost. Little Max was the one who started chasing a squirrel, not her. She just followed him so he wouldn't get lost and cry by himself. Her parents both worked in the university. Her father was a professor while her mother worked as an events organizer in the campus. 
It was a habit to take a walk around the campus as a family whenever her parents were off work. The scolding was interrupted when they met a couple of her parents' colleagues along the way. After telling her to stay put and to behave, her parents began chatting with their co-workers. The little girl felt bored so she started playing fetch with little Max using a small tree branch while also trying to open the candies the handsome big brother gave her earlier. The candy was square and white. It didn't look appetizing at all, but she still popped it in her mouth and then immediately spat it out. Ah, spicy. She started spitting to relieve the mint's cold burn on her tongue. That big brother looked handsome but he's so evil. He gave a nasty candy to a little girl like me. Bad man. Humph. Blake. While she spat and cursed the deceptive big brother, little Max saw another squirrel and began chasing after it again. The little girl didn't think before chasing after her puppy as well. She didn't know how far they ran but when she looked around, her parents were nowhere to be seen. Once again, they got lost. Stupid Max. Mommy and Daddy are going to scold me again. This area was unfamiliar to her. It looked empty and scary. Are you lost? Ah. The little girl was startled upon hearing an unfamiliar voice suddenly speaking. However, her alarm was quickly replaced by awe at the beauty in front of her. Wow, you're so pretty. Are you angel? she asked. The beautiful lady chuckled, her voice sounding as beautiful as her. The innocent little girl didn't notice the dangerous-looking men standing nearby who were watching her as if she was an enemy while she and her puppy approached the beautiful lady without any care in the world. The lady was sitting on the grass with her back against a tree trunk. She had a laptop on her lap. The little girl sat beside her, shoving the equally awestruck puppy to the lady. Evelina smiled at the little girl but most of her interest was on the puppy. She reached her fair hand and began petting its soft fur. From the corner of her eyes, she saw that her bodyguards were about to step forward to wrench the dangerous creature away. She quickly gestured for them to stay back without the little girl or the puppy noticing. Couldn't those men see that the girl and the puppy were harmless? Although reluctant, the bodyguards stayed back but their vigilance increased. There was no doubt that they would spare neither kid nor dog if they harmed her. It was fortunate that these men were her brother's subordinates. Compared to the ones working under her parents, her brother's loyal subordinates had at least a fraction of emotions remaining within their killing machine selves. The bodyguards were too skilled in concealing their killing intent that the young dog failed to detect any danger from them with its natural senses. What are you doing? the little girl asked Evelina. Playing with my computer. Do you want to try? The little girl nodded, her eyes shining with excitement. Evelina showed the little girl some of the basic games on her laptop. Then she searched for some American children's shows available on the internet and allowed the girl to watch an episode of her choosing. About twenty minutes later, the girl's parents found finally them. They thanked Evelina for her kindness in accompanying their daughter. Evelina watched them with curiosity, and a little envy. So that's what a normal family is like. The little girl was reluctant to part with Evelina's laptop. Evelina also felt reluctant to part with the puppy who already fell in love with her. She always wanted a pet but her mother forbade it, claiming that it would make her weaker and more soft-hearted than she already was. Her dream pet had always been a kitten but she found puppies cute, too. Bye, beautiful lady. Thank you for letting me borrow your computer. The little girl pulled Iris and pressed a kiss on her cheek. Oh, right. Here, you can have this. A pack of mints was shoved into her hands. Before Evelina could decline, the little girl and her puppy had already run away while chased by her exasperated parents. All Evelina could do was chuckle and wave goodbye to the nice family while touching her kissed cheek. Her bodyguards appeared beside her when the family disappeared from view. My lady, Boss Nikolai called and instructed us to bring you back. He wants to eat dinner together with you. All right. Let's go back to my brother. As they walked away, 
Evelina shook the pack of mints. She took out one and placed it in her mouth. Nice and refreshing. Her footsteps became lighter, as she smiled. Comma. An Italian aria and a pack of mints. Two very different people unknowingly received something from each other. Upon receiving what belonged from the other, they had no idea that both their fates had been sealed at that moment, that they had been tied by destiny. Unfortunately, the fate of the other one was doomed for an early and tragic death. Thus, their destiny couldn't be fulfilled right away. However, their tied destinies couldn't be broken by death alone. Love may not have started when their paths crossed for the first time but her song and his pack of mints had done their job in connecting their fates together. It might take some time but they would surely meet again, with one transcending death, to fulfill their destiny because. Her death is only the beginning of her life, and his love, you're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 656 Ugly Battle Everyone was shocked at Kang Huizhong's revelation. He, the famed corporate lawyer of Jin Corporation and personal attorney of CEO Jin Liwei, was playing assistant in a mere custody case for a toddler. Not only him, but even His Excellency Deng Gui. The former jurist of the International Court of Justice previously presided over cases involving conflicts between sovereign states and various organizations on the world level. And now someone in the top leagues like him was handling a child custody case. What in the world? Wasn't this supposed to be a simple case? The parents involved weren't even married, so the case shouldn't be too complicated. If it wasn't because the reporters were paid to bully Jiang Yingyu and tarnish her image in the media, the reporters wouldn't even bother covering such a small case like this. Then why did two big-shot lawyers suddenly involve themselves in this custody case? Were the reporters missing something? Perhaps the child was actually royalty. It's Iris Long. She must have asked her fiancé CEO Jean to invite Attorney Kong and His Excellency Deng to help her friend. Remember that attorney Hong who's representing Jiang Yingyu in this case is originally Iris Long's personal lawyer. Also, the child involved is not only her nephew but her godson as well. CEO Jean is the godfather. That makes sense. Only someone with CEO Jin status and influence could move big shots like His Excellency Deng and attorney Kong to waste their time in a small family case like this. Iris Long is a very lucky woman to have CEO Jean as her future husband. If this was the ancient times, she would be marrying an emperor. Yeah. But speaking of the two opposing sides in this case, I just find it intriguing that Iris Long is supporting the child's mother instead of the father. Long Hui is her brother, you know. Even if they're only half-siblings, you'd think that blood is thicker than water but by the look of things, Iris Long and Long Hui have become enemies because of Jiang Yingyu and her child. Now I feel motivated to follow this custody case and cover how it will turn out. The court hearing hasn't even started yet but so many things happened already. Same here. I just feel sorry for Long Hui now. I initially thought that he'll win custody of his son without any problems because he's the heir of the Long clan and Jiang Yingyu is only a mere bodyguard, but with the appearance of His Excellency Deng and Attorney Kong supporting Jiang Yingyu, things aren't looking good for him. He needs to have a secret weapon of the same caliber as the two big-shot lawyers if he has any chance of winning this case. I can believe if there's someone in the same caliber as Attorney Kong in this country, but His Excellency Deng. Are you kidding me? If His Excellency claims to be number two, nobody in our country would dare claim to be number one. The reporters made their own conclusions based on their observations just now. Their original mission to make it difficult for Jiang Yingyu today was already forgotten, as they focused on the appearance of the big guns protecting Jiang Yingyu's side in this case. They all glanced at Long Hui standing in front of the courthouse's main entrance with his lawyer. Long Huey's expression turned darker when he saw the way the reporters were looking at him. Useless bunch. He shouldn't have bothered listening to Elder Long Meng. He ended up only wasting his money on these incompetent fellows. 
But more than the reporters, he was concerned more about the appearance of Kang Huizhong and especially Deng Gui. Even he could sense his own lawyer's anxiety now that they knew for sure that they would be dealing not only with the tough Hong Xiaoqiang but also with the two big shot lawyers. Long Hui felt worried. Extremely worried. However, the worry was only secondary to the hatred he felt for his youngest half sister Xiulan and her fiance Jin Liwei. His hatred for them was only growing more intense every time they did something to oppose him. So they decided to play dirty by using their status and influence to bully me. Humph. He felt indignant and mentally cursed the couple's dirty tactics, forgetting the fact that he also employed dirty tactics by hiring reporters to bully Jiang Yingyu. In his mind, it had nothing to do with him. It was all Elder Long Meng's idea. All he did was pay the money. After glaring at Jiang Yingyu's group, he turned and entered the courthouse with his sweating lawyer. Comma. The tension was very high in the courtroom. Both Jiang Yingyu and Long Hui, the main characters in this custody battle, had grim expressions on their faces. Most of the talking was done by their respective lawyers. Normally, small cases like this were done in a small courtroom and received judgment on the same day. If concluding on the same day wasn't possible, then the case would be extended. It would all be up to the judge and how long he or she would take to make a decision. This time, however, the original venue of the hearing was moved to a bigger courtroom all of a sudden. The judge presiding over the case also granted special permission to a select number of major news outlets allowing them to document the hearing. All of these were done a few minutes before the hearing's official start time. It was all because of the appearance of Deng Gui. The courthouse felt that they needed to show appropriate respect to such an illustrious figure in the field of law, and most importantly, they wanted to impress him. It was like a bunch of fans welcoming their idol. Nevertheless, the judge still managed to maintain an air of impartiality as he officially started the hearing. But with the media's presence, what should have been a simple proceeding became more like a performance between the lawyers and the judge. Accusations were thrown against each other. Skeletons in the closet were exposed. Malice were being shot like a flamethrower. There was a moment when everything became too much for Jiang Yingyu and she just broke down, bursting into heart-wrenching sobs. The lies about her cheating, she could still take. But the accusations of her being a bad mother? Of prioritizing her own desires over her son's? Too much. Long Hui was being too much. At that moment, she truly realized that it was really over between them, that he had completely changed, and that the Long Hui in front of her right now had become a total stranger, no, an enemy. When the photos and a video of her and Lin Yihan were shown, the reporters stirred with renewed interest. Jiang Yingyu was sure that the media would blow this out of proportion and drag Lin Yihan's name in the mud with her. She stopped crying. Her heartbroken expression was replaced by fury. She shot a cold glare at Long Hui. He really dared to drag an innocent man in their ugly battle. Poof! The last remaining small shred of love for him was finally killed in her heart, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 657 Numb the custody hearing lasted for several hours but still failed to reach a conclusion on the same day. After several heated back and forth between the two conflicting sides, the judge ended today's session and scheduled the next one tomorrow. Jiang Yingyu's team found an empty waiting room to congregate after the first court session ended. Long Hui and his lawyer also did the same thing, finding another room in the opposite direction. Hong Xiaoqiang sighed. This has turned into a media circus as I feared. I did my best to speed things up but the judge appears like he wants to prolong this custody case. It's because some stupid idiot invited the media, Deng Gui said, huffing in irritation. If the media wasn't already present here in the first place, the case would have proceeded normally and most likely ended today even with my appearance and involvement. Not everyone could recognize me anyway, only certain people could. Even among the reporters earlier, 
only one of them was able to recognize me but when he did, it snowballed and everyone else ended up focusing on me instead. Kong Huizhong nodded. Indeed, the media's involvement in this case has complicated things. Now it looks like we also need to deal with public opinion. It shouldn't affect the judge's decision, he looks competent enough, but it would certainly affect you, Miss Jiang. I'm afraid that you need to prepare yourself for the worst when it comes to the public's opinion of you, especially now that Mr. Long showed the photos and videos of you and Mr. Lin spending time together with your son. The media will certainly use those misleading evidence and insinuate a false narrative about your relationship with Mr. Lin. I'm sure that Mr. Long's side will also feed that false narrative. The nerve. What an asshole. Clover roared. Her face had already long turned red in anger. Sissing you may not have a romantic relationship with eldest brother Yihan, but he's still many times a better man compared to that jerk. If we weren't in court, I would have already channeled my inner momsy and beaten that asshole with my mighty boots. All the things he and his lawyer said, who's also an asshole by the way, were all disgusting. I really can't believe that such a malicious person is my boss brother. You really can't trust blood relations. Just look at how boss and fifth bro how act more like the true siblings than that asshole. He must never get little Junie boy. I don't want our baby Junie turning into an asshole like his father when he grows up. I won't allow him to take our son away from me, Jiang Yingyu replied in a surprisingly calm voice. It was a huge contrast to her emotional breakdown earlier during the court session. But I won't deprive him of his right as the father either. If he wants to see his son and become part of little June's life, I'll let him. I can give him at least that despite all the hurt and humiliation he caused me. Without him, our son wouldn't be born into this world. Clover sighed and grumbled, you're too kind, sissing you. But it's your decision. If that's what you want, I'll support you. After discussing their strategy for tomorrow's court session, they left the courthouse through a nondescript side entrance where they were whisked away by their waiting cars, causing the reporters waiting at the other entrances to miss them. Inside the car, Jiang Yingyu felt numb physically, mentally and emotionally. Long Hui, her former boss and the man she fell stupidly in love with and who fathered her beloved son, painted her as a promiscuous, gold-digging, cheating slut during the court hearing. The anger was there inside her but she was too exhausted to feel it. Before she knew it, her eyes had closed and she fell into a restless and dreamless slumber. Comma. At Lin Yihan's farm villa mansion. Eldest bro, this, oh shit, UMO couldn't help but curse as he watched the evening news on TV. Lin Yihan's lips pressed into a thin line as he watched several photos and a video clip of him and Jiang Yingyu at the mall together with Little Jun, whose face was blurred out, being shown on the evening news. The custody battle was actually featured as a major news story tonight. And the implication was clear. The news wanted people to believe that he had an affair with Jiang Yingyu while she was still engaged to Long Hui. His usual gentle expression was nowhere to be seen. It looked stormy instead. So stormy that UMO didn't dare make any jokes to lighten the atmosphere like he usually would in normal situations. However, when the news showed a short video clip of Jiang Yingyu sobbing in utter heartbreak in the courtroom, Lin Yihan's stony expression cracked revealing concern, sympathy and also unwarranted guilt. He felt sorry for her. Then he felt furious at the asshole who made her cry like that. When the news showed the face of Long Hui next, Lin Yihan lost his temper and threw the remote control hard. It struck the antique vase on top of the coffee table, breaking both the vase and the remote control into pieces. He imagined that the broken vase was the son of a bitch's face which made him feel a little better but failed to decrease the growing fury he felt. Not caring about the next portion of the news story about the involvement of big shot lawyers Deng Gui and Kang Huizhong. Lin Yihan grabbed his phone and called Jiang Yingyu's number. It kept on ringing and going into voicemail. He tried calling her seven times but she wasn't answering. Lin Yihan stood up and walked out of the living area. 
Eldest bro, where are you going? UMO called after him. I'm getting my coat and keys. I'm driving to third brother's place. I need to talk to Miss Jiang and see with my own eyes how she's doing. Oh okay. Wait for me. I'm coming, too. You're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 658 Trust in Your Friend Dragon Palace Home Number 10 When Lin Yihan and UMO arrived at the mansion later that evening, Iris was accompanying Jean Liwei in the kitchen for his late dinner. Jean Liwei just returned home from work. Iris and the others already ate dinner earlier. Since Lin Yihan and UMO hadn't eaten yet, they also joined their third brother. Lin Yihan was restless. Where's Miss Jiang? How is she feeling? Is she okay? No, what a stupid question. She obviously won't be okay. Ying Yu is already asleep in her room when I got home, Iris replied. Clover said that she looked exhausted and terrible which is understandable given what she went through during the court hearing today. Her expression became dark. She hissed, I heard about the baseless accusations thrown at her. How dare he? That man is not my brother. I have no brother who's a stupid and malicious craven. Jean Liwei's expression became colder but his hand resting on her shoulder was gentle as he began massaging her tense muscles. Don't worry, love. Jiang Yingyu is the mother of our godson and your friend, not to mention that she's part of our household, our family. Nobody touches anyone from our family and gets away with it. Iris nodded. His words calmed her down but couldn't relax her completely. Then she turned to Lin Yihan who hadn't touched his food yet. Eldest brother, you've been dragged into the mess created by my bro, I mean, by Long Hui. Don't worry about me, Xiolan. Lin Yihan's smile didn't reach his eyes as if he was forcing it, but his usual gentle expression was back. I'm a grown man. I can handle something like this, no problem. I'm more worried about Miss Jiang. She may look strong and tough on the outside but she's actually very soft-hearted and delicate on the inside. The three raised their eyebrows at his statement and glanced at each other with a meaningful look but didn't interrupt him. UMO wisely decided to keep his mouth shut and not crack a joke at this time. It seemed that their eldest brother had been paying a rather close attention to Jiang Yingyu. He was even able to grasp her real personality with great accuracy despite only occasionally interacting with each other. Was he always this observant? Wang Yingjie was usually the most observant among the brothers when it came to people's characters and relationships, but it seemed that in the case of Jiang Yingyu, Lin Yihan had become quite observant as well. Did the two grow closer to each other without the others noticing? Lin Yihan continued speaking, not noticing the weird looks the others were throwing at him. All of these, are very unfair to Miss Jiang. It frustrates me that I'm also being used as a weapon to hurt her and to ruin her image to the public. She's such a good person and a good mother. She doesn't deserve something like this. I want to help her, I want to, to do something. But I'm afraid that if I do, I'll just be feeding the fake rumors about us having an affair. I don't want to cause her any more pain than she's experiencing now. Damn it. I want to smash Long Huey's face with my fists. The others were surprised at his outburst. Indeed, he looked frustrated and helpless at the same time, but there was also determination mixed in there. Like Wang Yingjie, Lin Yihan rarely lost his composure. Wang Yingjie was an extremely busy doctor so he thrived under pressure, even in literal life and death situations. That was why Wang Yingjie was already so accomplished in his profession despite his relatively young age among doctors with the same specialty as him. As for Lin Yihan, he was the eldest among the five and had long took it upon himself to become the source of stability for his brothers. He was also fiercely protective of those he considered family and suspicious of anyone popping up in their close, tight-knit circle all of a sudden like when he met Iris for the first time back then. He may look amiable and gentle but he didn't trust anyone easily, 
so it was a big surprise to UMO, Jean Liwei, and Iris that he would react this strongly about Jiang Ying Yu's current situation. Iris opened her mouth about to say something but Jean Liwei gave a gentle squeeze on her shoulder, silently telling her to stay quiet. She frowned, displeased that he stopped her but upon seeing his expression, she understood his silent message. Although reluctant, she nodded and didn't share any opinion out loud regarding Lin Yihan's involvement in the mess that was the custody case, comma. The dinner became somber after that, so UMO steered the conversation to a much lighter topic. Later, Iris and Jean Liwei retired to their bedroom suite after bidding the others good night. Lin Yihan and UMO decided to sleep over at the mansion because it was already very late and Lin Yihan's farm was quite far from Dragon Palace homes. When the couple reached their bedroom, they began talking about the custody case while Iris helped Jean Liwei out of his suit and get him ready for bed. The furrow between her brows indicated that she was worried for her friend, Jiang Yingyu. Jean Liwei kissed the space between her brows until the furrow disappeared. We'll win this custody case. Our lawyers including Sir Deng Gui have formed a formidable team. We should trust in them, he reassured her. She sighed, smiling a little. Yes, we should thank Grandpa Lu for inviting his longtime friend Sir Deng. No. If we try thanking him, he'll just scold us and tell us, how dare you treat your grandpa like a stranger. Bah. I'm only doing this for the sake of my beloved great-grandbaby, not for you rascals. And also, what's wrong with you dunderheads for being so slow in giving me more great-grandbabies? I want to know. Get to work now. I'm not getting any younger. Iris was a little startled when Jean Liwei imitated Grandpa Lu's usual words in a monotone voice and a deadpan expression that she honestly didn't know how to react at first. Then she doubled over and pressed her face against his chest as she laughed so hard until her stomach ached. The corners of Jean Liwei's lips lifted into a soft, doting smile. He wrapped his arms around her shaking body from too much laughing and pulled her closer. Feel better. Lifting her head to look up at him, she smiled and nodded. Her eyes were watery from laughing too much. Then her expression became serious again. I trust in our lawyers. And I trust in us to protect our godson. I'm just worried about in you, and now eldest brother is involved as well. They're not like me who constantly has to deal with negative publicity in the media. I think I should. Love, I agree that we should be protecting little June and make sure not to let that stupid idiot take our godson away from Jiang Yingyu. She's also your friend, so I understand that you're worried about how she's coping with the stress. But remember that she's already a grown woman. We can't always interfere on her behalf. We have already lent her all the tools she'll need to win this custody battle and live a good life with little June. Still, there are some things that she needs to face by herself. She'll never get over Long Hui if we always shelter her. He'll forever be a devil in her heart, casting an inescapable shadow over her and little June's lives in the future. Iris was quiet, feeling conflicted by his words, but she understood that he made sense. It was just that this was the first time in her two lives that she had real, close friends. She couldn't bear to see any of them suffer. You're her friend, not her guardian or provider, Jean Liwei continued. He lifted her chin with his fingers and made her look at his eyes. Don't worry about her. My wife's friends are not weak cowards. Trust in your friend. She'll get through this with her own strength. We just need to be there for her and let her know that she's not alone. Yes, you're right. I should trust my friend more. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 659 Are We Eloping? Jean Liwei was satisfied that his baby girl understood his point. But what about the cheating allegations between Yu and eldest brother? Iris asked. Those misleading photos are really damaging. Should we? Love, just as I want you to trust your friend, I also trust in mine. Eldest brother is amiable but he's no weak man. 
You heard him at dinner. He cares for Jiang Yingyu. To what extent, I don't know, but rest assured that he'll do everything for the people he cares for. And it seems like Jiang Yingyu is now one of those people, just like us. The cheating allegations involve the two of them. Let's see how they handle it first. If they're unable to solve it by themselves, we'll step in. How's that? She sighed but still nodded. I don't think we would need to step in, to be honest. Eldest brother likes keeping a low profile but he's not without his own influence. Also, don't be fooled by that gentle expression. Remember that he's a gun and shooting expert. He also has a vicious side to him, surprisingly. Being eldest brother doesn't just mean that he's the oldest among us. It also means that he's the one we accept as our leader that we five brothers accept and respect. Your husband has no weak and cowardly friends, he said in a proud manner. Iris felt calmer after hearing Jean Liwei's reassurances. Indeed, it took a bit of time before she felt fully accepted by Lin Yihan. He was always nice and kind to her, but she sensed that he still kept some distance from her until he felt assured that she truly loved Jean Liwei. After that initial hurdle, Lin Yihan now treated her like family, like one of his own. This kind of loyalty was what she admired the most among the five brothers and what she also wanted with her friends, the girl squad. If Lin Yihan really started caring about Jiang Yingyu and began to treat her like family, then Iris would feel less worried for her friend. Nevertheless, she still intended to take action if things didn't work out like what Jin Liwei said. She agreed to let Jiang Yingyu face the hardships being thrown at her right now, but Iris didn't plan on leaving her friend alone to face everything by herself. For now, however, she would follow her darling's suggestion and trust in both their friends. Indeed, she and her darling had no true friends who were weak cowards. Smiling, she tried giving Jean Liwei a playful pinch on his hip but failed because it was all hard muscles. So she gave him a playful bite on his chest instead. It was still all hard muscles but her teeth had a stronger grip than her fingers. He grunted more from pleasure than from pain. Calling us husband and wife, we're not married yet, she reminded him. We will be. Soon. Are we eloping? If you want. She tilted her head to the side, seriously thinking about it. But before she could form a decision, he added, I prefer that we don't, though. I admit that I had thoughts before of tricking you into eloping with me but I love you too much to do that to you. I want to give you your dream wedding as much as possible, even if we have to rush it. Our wedding is an extremely special occasion. It's a celebration of our love. It shouldn't be something careless. Oh. Iris felt touched, then concerned. But I don't know what my dream wedding is. I never thought that I'd be marrying someone I love. Comma. A distant look glazed over her eyes, as she remembered her past life's circumstances. She was Evelina Vitrova who had no freedom. There had been several marriage offers for her, but they were all from scions of other criminal families. She rejected all of them but her words carried no weight in the Vetrov family because of her refusal to contribute to the organization's activities. If it weren't for her big brother who intimidated and threatened her suitors, their mother would have probably married her off to the best candidate the moment she turned 18. And the best candidate would always be the one whose family could provide the best benefits to the Vetrov organization. Since she was basically a useless deadweight in terms of her contributions to the organization, all she was good for was for marriage connections. Thus, she never had any delusional dreams of marrying a man she would one day fall in love with. To her, there was no other man in the world who could be better than her brother. Never did she expect that she would fall so deeply in love with someone after her death in her next chance in life. Jean Liwei was not a better man than her brother, but she realized now that her brother was not a better man than Jean Liwei either. Both men had their own strengths and flaws. They were different from each other that there was no use in comparing them. She loved both of them in different ways. Now that Jean Liwei broached the subject of her dream wedding, she realized how foreign the concept was to her. 
She knew what it was, of course, but it still felt alien. What could she say to him? He wanted to give her what she thought of as a perfect wedding but had no idea of what she wanted. Upon hearing his baby girl's reply, Jean Liwei couldn't help but frown. No dream wedding. Never thought that she would marry someone she loved. He heard from someone before that all women had a dream wedding regardless of whether they ended up marrying the one they loved or not. Was it not the same for his baby girl? Ah, it must be because she was special. His baby girl was so special that she was different from other women. Yes, that must be it. The realization made him relax. Don't worry, my love. I'm here, aren't I? I don't have one either. So we'll just have to construct our dream wedding together. You're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 660Y, Mr. Lin Lin Yihan couldn't sleep despite feeling at home at his third brother's place. He felt restless. If his second brother wasn't so strict about their health, then Lin Yihan would probably have looked for a cigarette to smoke right now in an attempt to relax. It was already past midnight. Living in a farm trained him to sleep early and to rise early. But sleep was proving to be elusive tonight. Sighing, he tossed the covers away and climbed off the bed. Then he started walking around the dimly lit hallways, hoping that by tiring himself, he would be able to sleep. His third brother's mansion was huge but he knew its layout like the back of his hand. All of them brothers treated each other's homes like an extension of their own homes. Just as all his brothers were welcome at his home, he was also welcome in theirs. They were family, after all. His mind drifted to different kinds of thoughts but most of them were about Jiang Yingyu's custody battle for her son Little Jun against her ex, Long Hui, and of course, the cheating allegations between him and her. The stress was getting to him, so he could only imagine what Jiang Yingyu was going through. The woman must be suffering. Lin Yihan thought that a man who could hurt his lover, ex or not, like that wasn't a real man at all. This isn't working at all. I won't be able to sleep if I keep thinking like this. I need to clear and relax my mind. Wanting to do just that, he planned on stepping outside in the hopes that the cold late autumn weather could blast the stressful thoughts out of his mind. But when he stepped outside the nearest balcony at the end of the hallway, someone was already occupying the place. Mr. Lin, Jiang Yingyu greeted him in a surprised tone. Miss Jiang, he replied with a nod. I didn't know that you're here. I arrived late in the evening with fourth brother M.O. Shilan said that you were already asleep. She nodded but didn't reply. Instead, she returned to looking at the dark, hazy, night sky. Lin Yihan couldn't see her clearly in the dark. Only the dim lights from the hallway illuminated the balcony. The moon and the stars were hiding behind thick, dark clouds. Wanting to take a closer look at her to see if she was all right, he headed to where she was and stood beside her in front of the ornate balustrade. He noticed her stiffening when he got close to her but felt relieved when she didn't move away. They didn't speak to each other but just stood there, gazing at nothing in front of them. The silence was awkward at first but as minutes ticked by, it gradually felt comfortable until they felt themselves relaxing bit by bit. I came because I wanted to see if you're okay, Lin Yihan said, breaking the silence first. Jiang Yingyu didn't reply immediately because she didn't know which words were the most appropriate to say. I, thank you, Mr. Lin. I'm, I'm okay. Don't lie, please. Anyone who goes through what you're going through right now certainly won't feel okay. Comma. Her breath hitched and her lips trembled a little. There was now a watery shine in her eyes which shimmered even in the darkness. She tried to blink the tears away to prevent them from falling. On the way home from the courthouse earlier, she felt numb and exhausted. But after waking up from a dreamless and restless sleep, she began feeling the emotions again. The heartache was there but it had now changed from a hopeless, yearning hurt to an enraged one from the total destruction of her first love. You're right, mister. 
Lin. I'm, not okay, she finally admitted with a shaky voice laced with anger. Her hands gripped the balustrades in front of her, channeling her angry heartache into the inanimate object. I have to, to apologize to you, Mr. Lin. I just saw that our photos have been shown on the news. Don't apologize. It's not your fault. Not mine either. It's not our fault. There's nothing we should feel sorry about. She finally faced him. But because of me, you got into this mess. I told you it's not your fault. We met at the mall by coincidence. It's nobody's fault, except for the malicious people who took the photos and video and intended to frame the two of us as a cheating couple. It's their fault. But the biggest fault lies in, in the person you love who's using those misleading evidence to hurt you and to destroy both of our reputation. I don't love that person anymore. He studied her face. His eyes had already adjusted to the darkness so he could now see her expression. Are you sure? Why yes. Yes. He hurt me so much that all my love for him has been battered out of me. How, how could he do this to me? Even if he stopped out loving me and doesn't want, to be with me anymore, why does he need to hurt me this much? He could just, leave me, but why do this? Why, Mr. Lin? Why? Lin Yihan pulled her to his embrace. The front of his shirt got soaked immediately from her angry, gushing tears. Then she started beating his chest in her current emotional state. As a muscular and physically strong woman, all of her hits packed a hard, solid punch, making him wince in pain, but he did his best not to groan or complain. Instead, he tightened his arms around her and pulled her closer. His chest might be bruised black and blue but his heart felt more painful as it squeezed in response to her sorrowful sobs. He didn't say anything, just allowed her to cry her heart out in his arms. While he comforted her with his silent warmth, his cold eyes glinted in the darkness with a fury that he was barely able to control. I'll never treat my woman like this. Never destroy her like this. You're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 661 New Friend Jiang Yingyu's hits gradually weakened until they stopped. She continued crying, releasing all of her hurt, fury and frustrations. Without noticing her own actions, her arms had wrapped around Lin Yihan's thin waist and she clung to him. They remained embracing for how long, they didn't know. Only when they felt themselves shivering a little did they realize that they had stayed outside the cold night for too long. She pressed her hands against his chest and pushed him away upon realizing the position they were in. Heat spread over her entire face and neck. He let her go and stepped back. Then he turned and faced the dark emptiness of the property grounds below them in order to give her time to get her bearings. He didn't want her to feel too awkward or uncomfortable around him after their embrace. From the corner of his eyes, he could see that she was wiping her wet face with the sleeve of her shirt. It's getting cold. Should we head back inside, he suggested after some time. Why yes. Let's go. She walked ahead of him, moving so fast that she was almost running. In her rush to put a distance between the two of them, she ended up stubbing her toe against the metal leg of a chair in the balcony. Ow! What happened? Lin Yihan rushed towards her. Jiang Yingyu groaned both from the pain and embarrassment. How could she be so clumsy? She wished a hole could open in the ground and swallow her up. Are you okay? he asked. I, I'm okay, she replied in a weak voice while massaging her hurt toe inside her winter slippers. Let me see. No, it's all right. Really. The pain eventually went away after a couple of minutes. However, Lin Yihan still insisted on holding her arm to support her as they returned inside the hallway together. Once they were inside, he suddenly knelt down and reached towards her foot. Mr. Lin. There's no need. It's okay now. It doesn't hurt anymore. 
Let me see. No, I'm really. Let me see. His tone was firm, leaving no room for arguments. Jiang Yingyu closed her eyes in embarrassment before finally allowing him to take a look at her toe. He removed her cozy slipper and lifted her foot to get a better look, forcing her to hold on to his shoulder for balance. His touch was light and gentle, yet goosebumps formed on her skin. She held her breath and felt her entire body tensing. Her heart began beating quickly inside her chest. She attributed all of these reactions to mortification. Hmm. It's red and swollen, he said. We should apply an ointment or something. Wait here. I'll ask one of the household staff. I know that some are still awake at this time. Mr. Lin, there's no need to bother anyone. I have an ointment in my room. I'll apply it myself. He looked up at her while still holding her foot. Are you sure? Yes. I have a lot of medicinal ointments and creams. Many of them are for pain relief because I train a lot so I frequently suffer from sore muscles, cuts and bruises and, she shut her mouth upon realizing that she was blabbing. Ah, uh, so embarrassing. I see. That's good. Lin Yihan took her slipper and began putting it back on her foot. I'll do it, mister. Lin. There, it's done, he said, placing her slippered foot back down on the floor. Then he rose and stood in front of her, a gentle smile on his face, comma. Jiang Yingyu blushed and avoided looking directly in his eyes. She would just feel more embarrassed. I it's late now, mister. Lin. We should, uh, go back to sleep, she stammered. Yes. Have a good night, Miss Jiang. Gee good night. Nobody moved. They remained there standing in front of each other. She looked tense while he looked calm. I'll walk you to your room, Miss Jiang. Please show the way. W what? No need. I, I can find my own way. Yes, I can de-do that. All right. He didn't push it. I'll be going first, then. Please try to rest as much as possible. She nodded. After giving her another gentle smile, he turned around and started walking away. Wait. He stopped and looked back at her. I, thank you. What? He didn't hear because her voice was too soft and she wasn't looking at him. She forced herself to look directly in his eyes and spoke in a louder and sincere voice. Thank you, Mr. Lin. I, I feel so much better now, so thank you. His gentle smile deepened. You're always welcome, Miss Jiang. Glad you feel better. And please, don't treat me like a stranger. We're friends now, aren't we? She was a little startled at his question and thought about their current relationship. At first, she treated Lin Yihan as her boss friend. Then she started seeing Lin Yihan more because Jin Liwei's sworn brothers often dropped by at the mansion to hang out. She couldn't say that her connection with Lin Yihan was close, but they certainly weren't strangers anymore. So were they friends now? After thinking about what they had to go through right now in regards with the cheating allegations against the two of them, Jiang Yingyu felt that it had indeed made them a little bit closer to each other. Yes. We're friends, she replied. His gentle smile turned into a full-blown grin, looking very pleased by her answer. Yes, we're friends. Have a good night. Yes, good night. He left. Jiang Yingyu felt confused about her whole interaction with Lin Yihan. There was embarrassment for losing control of her emotions and her clumsiness and also, happiness. For what? I gained a new friend, that's why I'm happy. She returned to her bedroom and applied ointment to her toe before having the best sleep for the first time in weeks, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 662 The Return of King Yama The custody battle between Jiang Yingyu and Long Hui for their son, Long Jun, raged on for the next few days. 
The media attention surrounding the case intensified with the involvement of His Excellency Deng Gui and Jean Corporation's Kong Huizhong, even though they only played assistant roles to attorney Hong Xiaoqiang. Some members of Jean Corporation's board of directors and a handful of Jean Clan's branch families were unhappy that their corporate lawyer had involved himself in a mere child custody case. They felt that Kang Huizhong was cheapening himself by playing second fiddle to a lawyer of a much lower status than himself, Hong Xiaoqiang, in such a small case which was also turning out to be messier and uglier by the day. They were worried that all the negative publicity surrounding the case would sully Jean Corporation's sterling image and reputation. As a result, they demanded an emergency meeting with Jean Liwei in order to complain about Kang Huizhong's involvement in the custody case. They wanted him to pull Kang Huizhong out of the case as soon as possible. Jean Liwei was angered when he received the demand for a meeting. He rejected it immediately. It seems that those fellows have gotten too comfortable in their positions, actually, demanding, an emergency meeting from me. Su Tian, have I been too kind to them lately that they actually now have the gall to, demand, that I come to their beck and call just because they want it? I think it's high time to remind them who's the president CEO in this company, Jin Liwei said behind his huge wooden desk in his office. Su Tian couldn't help but swallow in response to his boss glacial expression. He was already mentally lighting candles for those people who dared complain and demand an audience with the president CEO for such an insignificant matter as Kang Huizhong's involvement in a small, outside case. Jean Corporation didn't own Kang Huizhong. He had every right to work on other cases outside the company if he wanted. It seemed that the board of directors and those branch families had forgotten about this detail. Jean Liwei may have requested Kang Huizhong to take the custody case, but the lawyer had the freedom to reject it if he really didn't want to involve himself in the custody case. Kang Huizhong was extremely loyal to Jean Liwei, so he had no qualms accepting the request, even though he felt that it was a little insulting given his status as a famed corporate lawyer. However, he changed his mindset after learning that His Excellency Deng Gui was also joining the team. If such an illustrious and highly respected lawyer on the world level could involve himself in a small family case like this, Kang Huizhong had no reason to complain. In fact, he had begun to treat the custody case as a great honor because he got to work alongside such a prestigious lawyer as His Excellency Deng Gui whose name had been etched in the history books of international law, comma. Back in Jin Liwei's office, Su Tian recalled his previous training to stay calm and impassive in front of his boss frightening aura. It had been a while since Jean Liwei unleashed this kind of hellish King Yama-like aura, evoking fear, dread and caution to all who worked at Jean Corporation. Being in a relationship with Iris had mellowed his intensely overbearing aura, making him a little more approachable to others. Su Tian cleared his throat. President, you are without a doubt the head of our company. You have the right to enforce disciplinary actions to those who have stepped out of line. Jean Liwei nodded and gave Su Tian instructions on how to respond to those who demanded a meeting with him. Those people would feel the full brunt of his authority as Jean Corporation's president CEO shortly. For those who complained, he ordered Kang Huizhong and his law firm to drop them as clients. Most high level employees and shareholders, including almost all members of the board of directors, and the relatives from the branch families who worked for Jean Corporation received free legal services from Kang Huizhong's law firm, courtesy of the company. This was only added to the unwritten employee benefits after Jean Liwei became the president CEO. As people who worked in the business industry, there were many legal matters that they didn't need to worry about because Kang Huizhong's law firm always took care of everything for them. The attorney's law firm was one of the best, if not the best, in the country when it came to handling clients in the corporate world. Being dropped as clients by a first-rate law firm would be a huge embarrassment to them. Also, upon hiring another lawyer, they would need to start paying premium price to legal services that they previously enjoyed for free. Even though they were wealthy because of their high positions in the company, it still didn't feel good to dish out the money for previously free services. It wasn't only this. Jean Liwei also cut down other unwritten employee benefits they previously enjoyed. Not all, of course. 
He didn't want to push them too far into rebellion, but just enough to remind them that he still had the highest single active authority in Gene Corporation as the president CEO. After Su Tian implemented Gene Liwei's instruction, those who complained grumbled among themselves but didn't dare oppose the punishments. Indeed, they had almost forgotten how tyrannical Jean Liwei could be once provoked. Having their various benefits cancelled hurt, but they couldn't complain because the perks weren't included in their written contracts. Now they had to start pleasing Jean Liwei again, hoping that he would return those benefits to them soon. They had no choice. King Yama had returned. Jean Liwei was pleased that nobody dared to complain to him again after handing out the punishments. He thought that the matter was already over and was about to focus on his work again when he was interrupted by a VIP call, the highest level in his business contact list. It was an extremely furious Grandpa Lu. Super duper to the highest level very 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 important person, dot you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 663 Emperor Emeritus Grandpa Lu was happily tucked away in his Mediterranean-style mansion home in the suburbs doting on his first great-grandchild, Little June. The child was kept busy every day in order to distract Little June from feeling homesick and missing his mommy, mama, papa, cat cousins, and everyone at Dragon Palace Home No. 10. However, Grandpa Lu's great-grandfatherly bliss was interrupted when one of his spies in Gene Corporation informed him about some members of the board of directors and Gene branch families complaining about Kong Huizhong's involvement in the custody battle. Because it involved his beloved great-grandbaby Little June, he was instantly enraged. He immediately called Gene Liwei on the phone. Hello. Hello. Is this Liwei my boy? What's taking you so long to answer the damn phone? I want to know. Yes, Grandpa Lu. This is Li Wei. How may I help you? And I actually picked up your call on the first ring, Jean Li Wei answered in a calm tone while lowering the volume on the speakerphone because the old man's booming voice was many times louder than usual in his anger. Answering the first ring is still too long. You should answer my calls before the bloody phone even rings. I'm your beloved grandpa, you pinhead. Or have you forgotten? Jean Li Wei smiled at Grandpa Lu's unreasonable demand but was able to stop himself from chuckling or he would suffer a long round of scolding. All right, Grandpa Lu. Although I'm not a psychic so I don't know when you'll call me, I'll do my best to answer your calls before the phone even rings next time. Ha! Why are you taking those stupid words of mine so seriously, you rascal? Don't you know that your grandpa is just joking? Bah! You're so boring. I pity Shilan my girl for having to deal with the likes of you. It's because she loves me and accepts me for who I am, Jean Liwei replied, proud as a peacock. Bah ha ha! Well, you are my grandson after all. You know when to strike early to bag the girl before other flies and cockroaches start buzzing around her. I'm sure your grandfather Jean in heaven is also very proud of how you got yourself an excellent wife. Jean Liwei puffed out his chest, a smug expression on his face, looking prouder by the second. My wife is the most excellent woman in the world. Yeah, yeah. One's wife should be the best in all husband's eyes. If not, then you romance the wrong lady. N. Yes, as a husband you should, huh? Wait a minute, you rascal. Why are we suddenly talking about romancing your wife? I want to know. This isn't the reason why this old man called you. How dare you distract your beloved grandpa? I have important business to talk to you. You're the one who started talking about this subject, Jean Li Wei thought but didn't say out loud. All right, Grandpa Lu. May I know the reason why you called me? Humph. Your grandpa called you because of the urgent matter concerning the well-being our little Junjun. Nobody is more important than my beloved great-grandbaby. Comma. Jean Liwei's expression instantly became serious. He already knew what Grandpa Lu meant and his purpose for calling but still listened patiently while the old man spoke in his booming voice. 
This old man heard from my birds in the company that some pea-brained idiots are harping and complaining like smelly chimpanzees farts about that boy Kong Huizhong's involvement in little Junjun's custody case. How dare those nincompoops meddle in the matters concerning my beloved great-grandbaby. And how dare they complain about that boy Kong Huizhong's involvement in the case when I, Lu Jianhong, even asked my friend who was a former jurist in the damn International Court of Justice to also step in. Are they looking down on this old man and my friend? I want to know. They're all asking for a bloody spanking. Well? How come you're not doing anything yet? How could you allow those chimpanzees butts to order you around like that? Are you still the president CEO or are you just a useless decoration for show? I want to know. Grandpa Lu's harsh words didn't offend Jean Liwei at all. He continued to stay calm yet serious. Don't worry, Grandpa Lu. I already handled this issue. Those people won't dare oppose Attorney Kang's involvement in Little June's custody case anymore. He explained to the old man how he cancelled the expensive unwritten perks those people had been enjoying for many years. The cancellation of those perks will surely hurt them and force them to try pleasing me again in order to coax me into returning the perks in the future. Ha! Good, very good. But not enough. As long as I, Lu Jianhong, is still alive, nobody is allowed to put the welfare of my great-grandbabies at a disadvantage. Give me a complete list of all the names of those idiots. What are you going to do with the list? I'll fire all of them, that's what. I own half of the company so I have the power to do that. Watch me do it. Jean Liwei sighed and massaged his temples. Grandpa Lu, I know that you're angry right now. I'm furious. I know. I am, too. You don't sound like it. It's because I'm controlling myself. Humph. Jean Liwei continued speaking with patience. Grandpa Lu, firing the majority of the members of the board of directors will damage the people's trust in our company. We could get away with that if we're still a national company but we're now a multinational corporation and... Fine. I'll just fire one or two then. No, make that three. Make an example out of them. All right, Grandpa Lu. You'll receive the list in five minutes. That same day, those chimpanzees butts were all regretting their decision of making a big deal out of Kang Huizhong's involvement in the child custody case. Not only did they reawaken King Yama, but they also summoned the rare, explosive, volcanic rage of the Emperor Emeritus, the true power behind the company, and ended up suffering the full brunt of both authorities, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 664 New Evidence while the retired and the reigning emperors of Jin Corporation reminded the people under them who were in charge, silencing those who got too comfortable and brazen, the custody battle in court had become uglier, messier and more public due to the media spinning things out of control. Long Huey's camp continued feeding the cheating allegations between Jiang Yingyu and Lin Yihan, painting their immoral affair as the main reason for Long Hui and Jiang Yingyu's breakup. The photo and video evidence only made the allegations more believable. Jiang Yingyu's camp denied the entire matter of course, citing that it was Long Hui who distanced himself from her first. She was tired of playing nice. The custody case had become less of determining which parent was the best in raising the child and more on destroying each other. Given the formidable legal team representing Jiang Yingyu, Long Hui decided to recruit more lawyers but still came short when compared to the trio's combined backgrounds and accomplishments. Nevertheless, his camp only became bolder, throwing allegations on top of allegations in a ruthless effort to discredit her. Their efforts were certainly effective because public opinion sided with Long Hui and criticized Jiang Yingyu. She was painted as a loose woman who became pregnant before marriage in order to trap an heir. Then when she bore him a son, she had the audacity to use the child to blackmail her ex-lover for more money and benefits by withholding his paternal rights. Not only that, she even cheated on him with an agricultural tycoon. Truly, her appetite was voracious. 
Absolutely disgusting. This was the kind of woman that the general public hated. However, the situation took a sudden turn when Jiang Yingyu's legal team presented an unexpected evidence. It was a video and an audio recording of Long Hui barging into the Gold Heights condo unit where they were living in before. The surveillance video was taken from the front door area so the view of the scene in the living room was limited, but it was enough to prove the authenticity of the audio recording. It showed Long Hui arguing with Jiang Yingyu because of her suggestive photos with Lin Yihan together with their son at the mall. Jiang Yingyu's first concern was for their child, Long Jun. She wanted to bring their son to Iris Long's penthouse upstairs so that the two of them could talk. The problem was that Long Hui wasn't listening at all, even going as far as to curse and insult his own sister, her fiancé Jin Li Wei and especially her mother Wei Lan, for corrupting Jiang Yingyu and their son, Long Jun, into distancing themselves from him. Comma. The evidence made many of the people watching upset. It showed Long Hui trying to wrench their son from Jiang Yingyu's arms in a rough manner. Loud sounds of crashing due to the struggle made the scene appear more violent. However, the viewers could only focus on the frightened and pitiful crying screams of the child as his parents fought over him. Dada. Dada. Soe. Junjun good boy. Jiang Yingyu who had maintained a rather tough exterior in the next court sessions after breaking down on the first day, started tearing up again upon hearing her son's cries. It was painful for a mother to listen to her child's distress whether it was already in the past or not. It wasn't only her who became upset. The audience in the court felt for the poor child. What kind of monster could scare such a young child to scream and cry like that? He was only a toddler, a baby. Looks of condemnation were thrown at Long Hui, making him stiffen in his seat beside his lawyers. He was also upset at the video and audio recording but for an entirely different reason than everyone else. He was upset because he had no idea that there was a surveillance camera in the condo unit. Knowing that the unit was gifted by his youngest half-sister made him indignant and intensified his hatred for Iris even further. It was her fault. Everything was her fault. Because of her, his life was falling apart. Before everyone could recover from the shocking video, attorney Hong Xiaoqiang delivered an explanation of the evidence laced with pained anger, condemning Long Hui's abusive behaviors, not only to Jiang Yingyu but to their son as well and the trauma he might have caused the poor child, while at the same time, highlighting Jiang Yingyu's protective actions, effectively painting her as a good mother who always prioritized her son no matter what. This passionate speech was calculated to perfection from the specific words chosen, to the tone of delivery including the deliberate pauses, and the swelling emotions until the end. It was proofread, edited, and polished many times not only by Hong Xiaoqiang himself but also by his two big-shot assistants, Kang Huizhong and the illustrious veteran lawyer Deng Gui. All of these events were broadcast by the media. Public opinion sided with Long Hui, but after this new video evidence, it split with more people siding with Jiang Yingyu instead. The general public's impression of Jiang Yingyu was still low and unpleasant, mainly because most people would judge the woman first and find fault with her over the man in a broken relationship, especially if her social status was lower than the man, and also because she still hadn't proven to everyone yet that she really didn't cheat with Lin Yihan while still in a relationship with Long Hui. However, Long Huey's violent treatment of her and most especially their son as shown in the new video evidence was too much for most people to handle. So even though Jiang Yingyu still had to bear the label of a cheating woman, she was now viewed more favorably than the abusive Long Hui. Most also had to agree that based on the video, Jiang Yingyu portrayed herself as the better parent for their son. The judge seemed to agree, you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 665 If Only The custody case finally concluded on the fourth day of the official court sessions. Full custody was awarded to the mother, Jiang Yingyu, and limited visitation rights given to the father, Long Hui. And of course, he was ordered to provide child support every month until his son became a legal adult. 
Long Hui didn't resent paying child support. Not at all. It was his responsibility as a father, after all. In fact, he still regularly sent money every month to the bank account Jiang Yingyu set up for their son even when they were currently at war against each other. Jiang Yingyu set up the bank account shortly after she started working as Iris bodyguard back then. Long Hui knew that it was his youngest half-sister who advised Jiang Yingyu to open a separate bank account for little Jun. When they were all still in good terms with each other, he thought that her advice was an excellent idea. Well, to be honest, he still thought that it was an excellent idea but he would never admit that now because his hatred for Iris and everyone on her side had reached an all-time high at the moment. Yes, he had no problems paying child support. He already decided since the beginning that no matter what the outcome of the custody case was, he would always provide financial support to his son. The best case scenario for him was to, of course, win full custody of his son, but unfortunately that didn't happen, resulting in his pride taking a huge hit that left him reeling with so much negative feelings. After the judge announced the final result of the case, he still experienced a moment of disbelief even though he already expected it. Utter humiliation filled him, especially because he was the one who launched this custody battle in the first place. Yes, he knew that he would be the one at a disadvantage, not Jiang Yingyu, because of the power combination of Iris and Jin Liwei supporting her. But he still went ahead with it because his life was so shitty right now that he wanted the chance, no matter how small, to hurt Jiang Yingyu and punish her for choosing to stand on his sister's side rather than with him when he desperately needed her love and support during this difficult time that his status as the successor of the business and the clan was becoming more and more unstable. Jiang Yingyu's team didn't ask for an exorbitant amount of child support. Her request was actually quite reasonable, catching the media watching the entire proceedings off guard because they expected that she would milk him for all he was worth, like how his father Long Tingfei had been so tragically milked by Wei Lan when they divorced back in the old days. The amount she asked for was so reasonable that the judge took it upon himself to increase it in his final verdict. Unbeknown to others, Jiang Yingyu didn't want anything from Long Hui at all. When she quit her job as his bodyguard, broke up with him and then left him after getting pregnant with their child, she also didn't want anything from him. She loved him, but the Long clan had humiliated her, hurt her, and trampled on her dignity too much. If giving up on him back then was a sign of weakness, then she would readily admit that she was a coward. She didn't have the strength to fight for her love for him. Her own pride also didn't allow her to beg him for help. However, things were too difficult for an unmarried, single, pregnant and recently unemployed woman that time, so she had to force herself to swallow her own pride and accept Long Huey's goodwill offer of a lump sum money to help throughout her pregnancy, the birth, and the first year of their son. She refused to accept anything more than that, comma. Things changed when they got back together again after becoming close to Iris and Jin Liwei. Iris had persuaded Jiang Yingyu to allow Long Hui to act on his responsibilities as a father to their child. That was when Jiang Yingyu began accepting money from Long Hui which he deposited directly to Little Jun's bank account. All cash gifts given to Little Jun from others were also deposited into the account. The compensation she received from winning in the American libel case against Wu Qianqi was also all deposited as a trust fund for Little Jun. Jiang Yingyu didn't plan on touching her son's money unless it was absolutely necessary. She and her son were living comfortably with Iris and Jean Liwei while she worked as a member of Dragon Palace Home No. 10's security team. There was no need to touch the child support Long Hui was regularly sending. Little June would be able to access all of the money after reaching the legal age of majority. This was why she originally didn't demand child support in the custody case. If things went her way, she would have asked the judge a grand total of zero RMB for child support, but she was blocked by her lawyers, eventually persuading her to ask for something. The money was for her son, anyway, not for her. Long Hui wasn't aware of this. He just thought that the reasonable amount of child support requested was so like Jiang Yingyu. A wave of nostalgia and longing for her began crawling through the stormy sewer of negative emotions inside his heart. 
If only Shulan didn't get between us, I know that I would have still won you back when you left me after you got pregnant. If only Shulan wasn't stealing the position of successor from me, we would have all still continued living in peace and happiness. Perhaps we would have already been married now, maybe even got you pregnant again with our second child. If only Shulan didn't exist, my life would have been perfect. His heart turned cold. Yes, this is all your fault, Shulan, he whispered, you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 666 I Pity You As people shuffled out of the courthouse, the former lovers turned enemies had another face-off. Camera flashes and the reporters shouted questions rained down at them like lightning and thunder. Both groups were protected by their own respective teams of bodyguards, holding the reporters and curious passers-by at bay. Jiang Yingyu's team of bodyguards were especially impressive as they were her own colleagues working under Jean Liwei as part of Dragon Palace Home No. 10 security. Iris and Jean Liwei increased the number of bodyguards protecting her during the court sessions because there had been instances when she was almost assaulted by angry civilians who believed the cheating allegations against her and Lin Yihan, condemning her as an immoral slut who was unfit to be a mother. The new evidence against Long Hui changed this to some degree and her image somewhat improved. However, there still remained some people who were unsympathetic and unswayed by the new evidence, continuing to condemn her due to the cheating allegations. The new evidence only showed that Long Hui wasn't suitable to raise their son because of the proof that he would become rough and violent in front of the child when angered. It did nothing to prove that the cheating allegations were false. No matter how many times Jiang Yingyu swore that she didn't cheat on Long Hui, the fact of the matter was that she had no evidence to prove it, while Long Hui had the photos and video as evidence to show that she cheated on him. To the more critical members of the general public, this was enough for them to condemn Jiang Yingyu. Despite the attack on her image and reputation, Jiang Yingyu only stood straighter, held her head up high, and looked straight ahead. She didn't break down any more for the rest of the court sessions, except for the first day and when the new evidence was shown in court where her son's heart-wrenching cries were played for everyone to hear. A sense of strength that had nothing to do with her muscular physique began emitting from her. It wasn't too distinct yet, unlike Iris Natural, I'm the Queen, Aura which could be overwhelming to others sometimes, but Long Hui immediately noticed the change in Jiang Yingyu because they were former lovers. He didn't like it at all, preferring the previous timid Jiang Yingyu who looked at him with her innocent eyes filled with love for him. Even when she left him after becoming pregnant back then, he could still see the love for him shining in her eyes. It was why he always had the confidence of winning her back and gradually persuading her to follow him to the Long Clan and live happily ever after together with their son. Wasn't their love story like in the fairy tales? She was the poor maiden who made the handsome prince fall in love with her. He was, of course, the prince who swept off her feet. They were supposed to have a happy ending after overcoming various obstacles but because of the great villain, K.A. His half-sister, Shulan, the poor maiden was corrupted and their love story ended up becoming a tragedy instead, comma. Ignoring the questions being thrown by the reporters around him, Long Hui spoke to Jiang Yingyu in a mocking tone. Are you happy now that you won? Jiang Yingyu didn't back down this time. Her tone was cold. All you think about is winning and losing. I don't view anything concerning our son as black and white like you do. My number one priority will always be little June, not about winning or losing. If I could give my son a happy, safe and fruitful life, I don't care if I lose again and again. Unfortunately, you can't give that happy, safe and fruitful life to our son because you're a typical Long who only thinks about protecting your high pride. You're crazy if you think I'll allow you to take little June to the Long clan where he'll only be bullied for the rest of his life. I didn't give birth to my son just so he'll suffer. I'll protect him, he hissed. Her voice only became colder. You don't have the ability. You. Attorney Hong Xiaoqiang stepped in front of Jiang Yingyu and blocked Long Hui, while Attorney 
Kang Huizhong and His Excellency Deng Gui pulled her away. Their group security team was very tight and professional because the reporters were unable to get a clear view of Jiang Yingyu and Long Hui's current confrontation. Her group then started to leave. Long Hui was angered by her attitude. He wanted to follow her but his own lawyers pulled him back, so all he could do was raise his voice and continue taunting her. I don't have the ability to protect my son, you say. You mean that you do? She stopped and turned to face him again. Yes. He sneered. Who gave you that kind of confidence? Ah, right. Xiolan. And that s, mother of hers. He was about to say, slut, but stopped himself in time because of the reporter's presence. She didn't respond immediately but just continued looking at him instead. Her voice was soft when she finally replied, but he still heard her loud and clear. Yes, Chilan and the Viscountess taught me to be confident of myself and I'm thankful to them. I'm still a work in progress but I intend to be a stronger woman in order to be a better mother to our son. He snorted in derision. You think that you're untouchable now just because you have Shilan backing you? Do you really believe that she'll always be there to protect you? Ha! Don't delude yourself. She's only doing this to spite me and to damage my position in the clan. She's only using you and my son to hurt me. I pity you, Long Hui, she replied after a long pause. Then she turned on her heels and left with her team of formidable lawyers and impressive bodyguards, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 667 Welcome Home I pity you, Long Hui. The words echoed in Long Hui's mind, infuriating him, but he couldn't rashly act out in front of the people and media. Pity me? How dare you? You don't have the right to pity me. I'm a Long. You're just, nobody. That's right. You're just a nobody, Jiang Yingyu. Don't be too full of yourself just because you have the support of Shulan and Jin Liwei. One day, they'll abandon you too, just like how I abandoned you. Your only worth now is being the mother of my son, Long Jun. After shooting a last glare at the direction where her group disappeared from view, he also left with his less formidable and less impressive team of lawyers and bodyguards. Inside the vehicle, Jiang Yingyu felt relieved that the custody case was finally over. Although Iris, Jean Liwei, the lawyers, and the others kept on reassuring her that everything would be fine, she still couldn't stop herself from worrying. Attorney Hong Xiaoqiang sat beside her in the back seat while Attorney Kang Huizhong and His Excellency Deng Gui rode in another car. Good job on not letting yourself be provoked by Mr. Long's taunts back there, he said. I'm done with him. Good. He nodded. It's a big shame that he doesn't realize that he should be thankful to you that he still received limited visitation rights after we presented the evidence of him barging in the condo and fighting with you in front of your son. If you hadn't emphasized to the judge that you won't deprive Mr. Long of his paternal rights, I'm certain that instead of visitation rights, he'll get a restraining order instead. His lawyers must know this, too, but decided not to tell him because they already lost, anyway. Thank you, Attorney Hong. I really appreciate all the hard work you, His Excellency Deng and Attorney Kong put into helping me retain custody of my son. I'm aware that it's because Shilan asked you but I'm still very thankful. He gave her a kind smile but his expression became serious again. Although the judge's ruling is legally binding and therefore theoretically absolute, we live in a society where people do things that they're not supposed to do. For one, Mr. Long might appeal the custody ruling, so prepare for that. I don't think that he'll file an appeal, she replied. Why do you think that? Because his pride took a massive hit today. I have not only you, Attorney Hong, to defend me but there's also His Excellency Deng and Attorney Kong. If he doesn't have anything substantial to prove that he's a better parent than me besides the fake cheating allegations, he knows that he'll lose again. His high pride won't be able to handle another public defeat in the same battle. And most importantly, 
I'm sure that the Long Elders wouldn't tolerate another custody battle because it would make the clan lose face, especially since my son's status is, is not, legitimate. Her expression darkened but she continued, Long we won't push it too far because he doesn't want to risk losing too many supporters in the Long clan. That's why I don't think that he'll appeal the custody ruling. I see. That's good, then. One less worry for us, Attorney Hong Xiaoqiang said. Another thing is that you shouldn't be complacent just because the law sided with us today. You should keep a close eye on Mr. Long when he exercises his visitation rights for your son. We never know what may happen in the future so please be careful. Jiang Yingyu frowned and was about to tell the lawyer that Long Hui would never hurt their son, then she remembered how he roughly tried to wrench little June from her when he barged in the condo. Although it was in the heat of the moment and his rough actions were directed more at her than at little June, she decided to heed the lawyer's advice and not risk her son's safety just because she trusted in Long Huey's character as a father. Trust in his character. I don't know him anymore. He changed so much. No, maybe that's his real self and I never really knew him from the start. She closed her tired eyes and allowed herself to rest. Attorney Hong Xiaoqiang didn't bother her and read some documents instead. A ringing phone interrupted the silence. Jiang Yingyu opened her eyes and glanced at her phone. Her heart started beating fast when a certain name flashed on the phone screen. She answered the call before she could examine why her heart was racing all of a sudden. Hello. Miss Jiang, it's me. Yes, I know, Mr. Lin. Comma. Dragon Palace Home Number 10. The next day, the mansion was lively and cheerful with the return of Little June. Popcorn went crazy and howled non-stop because he missed his human cousin so much. The energetic orange cat ran in circles around Little June and rubbed himself against his cousin like crazy, acting as if they had been separated for five years instead of just five days. On the other hand, Ice Cream acted like the regal cat that she was, greeting her human cousin with a quick meow and a brief rub as if saying, Oh, you're back. Hello. Ah, moving is so exhausting. I need my beauty rest again. Bye. Little June didn't understand the meaning of Ice Cream's actions. All he knew was how delighted he was to be back home. His laughter filled the front foyer, bringing smiles to everyone's faces. All right, Corn Pop, that's enough. You running around in circles is making your great-grandpa dizzy. Are you actually a dog, not a cat? I want to know, a booming voice interrupted the lovely scene. Grandpa Boss, his name is Popcorn, not Corn Pop. Ehe, Dom, who just appeared, corrected Grandpa Lou. Little June's head turned to the new arrivals. His smile widened but then tears started gushing out of his eyes all of a sudden. Mommy. Wah. Jiang Yingyu's eyes also watered and caught her smiling crying son who barreled towards her and jumped into her embrace. Welcome home, little June, she whispered, hugging him close, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 668 Agricultural Tycoon Little June's arms wrapped tightly around Jiang Yingyu's neck, almost choking her, but she didn't mind because it meant that her son missed her, too. Just imagining if Long Hui won custody and took their son away from her was enough to make her feel faint, or maybe that was because her son was actually choking her, making her a little lightheaded. The little guy inherited her strong physique. A pair of smooth, delicate, lovely hands reached from behind and gently loosened the child's arms. Hello, little June, Iris greeted and kissed the top of her godson's head after preventing him from choking his own mother. Little June stopped crying and looked up. Mama. Then he saw the tall figure beside her. Papa. Iris and Jean Liwei didn't take little June from Jiang Yingyu yet, allowing her more time with her son. Afterwards, they all headed to the family living area for some morning refreshments. It was the weekend, so Jean Liwei didn't go to work. 
Iris also kept her schedule free today because little June was returning home and also because the couple was already busy preparing for their upcoming wedding. Only a few people knew about it. Their assistants, Dom and Su Tian who coordinated and found an auspicious date before winter and cleared their bosses' respective schedules, knew about the wedding of course. Jin Liwei's sworn brothers, Lin Yihan, Wang Yingjie, Yu Mo and Lu Ziheo, including his blood brother Jin Chonglin also knew about it. Similarly, Iris' friends, the other members of the girl squad besides Dom, Mimi, Clover, Long Jinjing and Chen Fei, were also informed about the upcoming wedding. Clover already flew to France a couple of days ago but would return for the special occasion. They were told to keep it a secret, especially Jean Chonglin whose every word coming out of his mouth had the potential to make into the national headlines. Even the couple's parents, including Grandpa Lu and Grandma Li, weren't aware of it yet. Iris and Jean Liwei would be meeting with a discreet wedding planner later in the afternoon. But for now, they intended to spend time with their family, especially their godson who they missed very much. Lively chatter and laughter filled the living area. Little June ran around and played with his cat cousins while the adults watched him with doting smiles on their faces. Even the household staff had similar expressions because they also doted on the adorable little guy. Ketchup even caught some of them slipping extra treats to Little June behind Jiang Yingyu and Iris' backs. Of course, the virtual white cat tattled on his human cousin and the household staff to her mommy and daddy just because she was a naughty chatterbox who loved exciting drama. Iris and Jean Liwei only laughed upon hearing about it and didn't reprimand anyone. However, Jean Liwei complained about the kind of treats his staff was giving to their godson. I should give everyone a raise so that they could buy something better for little June. Iris agreed with him, comma. Back to the present, nobody was talking about the ugly and messy custody battle. They didn't want to ruin the beautiful moment. Little June was tired running around, so he plopped his butt down on the plush carpet and turned the TV on by himself using the remote control. He was about to press the numbers of his favorite children's channel which he knew by heart when a familiar face appeared on the TV which was currently on a news channel. Anko Han. Anko Han. Anko Han. He pointed at the TV and started bouncing in excitement, catching everyone's attention. Eh. Isn't that Yihan? What's that boy doing on TV? Does he want to follow little Chomlin and shill on my girl in showbiz? Grandpa Lu's booming voice asked. He looked around and saw the unsurprised expressions on the others' faces. You already knew about this, don't you? You pinhead rascals. How dare you not tell your beloved grandpa about this? I want to know. Grandpa Lu, how about we watch and listen to the news first? Jean Liwei suggested. Humph. Fine. Jiang Yingyu watched the TV, her gaze drawn to Lin Yihan whenever he was shown. Lin Yihan had called her yesterday on her way home from the courthouse to inform her about his plans for today, so she wasn't surprised seeing him in the news. Nevertheless, she still couldn't help but feel anxious especially because it was related to her. She didn't notice that she was gripping her own hands so hard that they had turned white. The news story was about Lin Yihan suing certain reporters, including a number of tabloids and even a major news outlet, and most importantly, he was also suing Long Hui and his lawyers for defamation due to the cheating allegations made about him and Jiang Yingyu. Tycoon Lin Yihan who is among the top domestic producers and international exporters of tea, grains and other agricultural products in the country, has officially filed the lawsuit for defamation with his lawyer this morning against Long Industries Deputy CFO Long Hui and the following people, the news anchor reported. Ha! It's about time that he took action. I was wondering why that boy wasn't doing anything. He wasn't such a pinhead after all. Grandpa Lu continued commentating on Lin Yihan's news story with his booming voice. The others also continued watching the news despite Grandpa Lu's distracting loudness. They were already used to it, anyway. Being an agricultural tycoon might not sound as glamorous as a global corporate billionaire like Jin Liwei, but Lin Yihan was also influential in his own right, 
only in a more understated way. After all, the agricultural sector was integral to the entire country, providing the citizens' most basic need, food. It was a given that Lin Yihan had built his own list of impressive connections. And now he was showing what he could do with the power he had that many chose to overlook until he decided to wield it, like right now, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 669 Lie Detector Tez Jiang Yingyu thought that the news story would end after reporting Lin Yihan's defamation lawsuit against Long Hui and the others, but she was mistaken. The news also covered Lin Yihan's own evidence that he gathered to prove that he didn't have an immoral affair with Jiang Yingyu while she was still engaged with Long Hui. He was able to obtain several surveillance videos on the same day the pictures and videos used in the cheating allegations were taken. The first clips showed that he indeed met Jiang Yingyu and Little June by coincidence at the hospital when she brought her son for a pediatrician appointment. The surprise at meeting each other was clear as day on their faces. Also, Lin Yihan wasn't alone at that time. He was with Wang Yingjie who the news anchor introduced as one of the youngest yet already successful and accomplished surgeons in the country. What the news anchor didn't mention was that Wang Yingjie was also a scion of a powerful family with deep roots in the country, similar to Feng Wan's background. These families preferred to lie low to the point that not many were aware of how powerful and influential they really were. Even though Wang Yingjie wasn't the heir but only a son of a branch family, his current promising career as a successful surgeon had gained him enough respect from his entire clan, allowing at least some level of influence in his own right. After the clips from the hospital, another set of short surveillance videos were shown. This time, the place was at the mall. In contrast to the suggestive photos and video which had already long spread like wildfire since Long Hui revealed them in court, the real surveillance video clips showed that both Lin Yihan and Jiang Yingyu maintained appropriate distance from each other and polite behavior for the entire time that they were together. It was also obvious that Jiang Yingyu's main focus was her son. This only meant that the photos and video used in the cheating allegations were carefully chosen with malicious intentions. In addition to the surveillance videos, Lin Yihan also provided the results of a lie detector test he took on his own volition. Mr. Lin Yihan was asked by the examiner several questions including the most important which is if he had an affair, both past and present, with Miss Jiang Yingyu. He denied it and the polygraph test indicated that he was telling the truth. Meaning, that he really didn't have an affair with Miss Jiang, the news anchor reported. Although lie detector tests weren't 100% accurate, Lin Yihan's test result was treated with more reliability because he was able to invite the chief of police himself to personally supervise the polygraph test procedure. Iris raised an eyebrow upon seeing the chief of police, remembering that the man was the husband of Madame C. Xinyue, one of the Black Star's posh ladies with Fon Wan. I told you that eldest brother doesn't need our help. He has his own power and it's nothing to scoff at, Jean Liwei said after noticing her reaction. Iris nodded, feeling relieved that Lin Yihan finally took action to combat the cheating allegations between him and Jiang Yingyu. She would have chosen the faster, more thorough, more ruthless, and not so legal method of hacking if it was her, but she was nonetheless quite impressed by the method he chose which was a more, proper, and legal way than her idea. Hmm. She tapped her fingers on Jean Liwei's thigh. This is good but not enough. Eldest brother needs to show more. N. But I trust in him. I'm sure that he still has more up his sleeves. Comma. Indeed, Lin Yihan had more. Right after a personal statement by the chief of police giving his official seal of authenticity to Lin Yihan's polygraph test results was shown, the news story continued. This time, the focus shifted to Long Hui. Long Industries Deputy CFO Long Hui, eldest brother of multi-award winning musician Iris Long with the same father but different mothers, had accused his former fiancé and the mother of his son, Miss Jiang Yingyu. The formerly engaged couple fought in a heated custody battle which garnered wide media coverage because of the cheating allegations between Miss Jiang and agricultural tycoon, Mr. Lin Yihan 
and also because of Miss Zhang's impressive legal team which includes His Excellency Deng Gui, former head jurist in the International Court of Justice, and also attorney Kang Huizhong, the official corporate lawyer of Jean Corporation. Yesterday, the custody battle for Mr. Long and Miss Zhang's son finally concluded with the judge deciding to give full custody of the child to the mother, Miss Jiang, and only limited visitation rights to Mr. Long. But before that final verdict yesterday, Mr. Long had accused Miss Jiang of cheating on him with Mr. Lin while she was still engaged with him, citing that it was the main reason why they fought and separated, eventually forcing him to file an official custody request for their son. However, new evidence imply otherwise. Jiang Yingyu's full attention was on the TV. Her body was actually leaning forward as if doing so would allow her to listen more clearly to the news. She was also curious like the others about this new evidence the news anchor was reporting on. New evidence has come to light indicating that Mr. Long and his new fiancé, Miss Mao Chuyue from the Mao family, owners of Mao Textiles, are actually the ones who cheated first while Mr. Long was still engaged with Miss Jiang. The evidence alleges that Mr. Long's maternal family, the Zhengs, and the Maos have been in close contact with each other with the intention of matching Mr. Long and Miss Mao in marriage even though Mr. Long was in a relationship with Miss Jiang, you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 670 Bought for Love Dada Little June turned to his mother while pointing at Long Hui on TV. Mommy, is Dada? Jiang Yingyu didn't hear her son because she was shocked at learning that Long Hui might have cheated on her while they were still engaged. Although all her love for him had recently been killed in her heart, the betrayal still stung. Look here, Juni boy. Dong distracted little Jun by showing his favorite baby cartoon program on his phone. Come, let's watch together. Then he carried the child to the other side of the room while the two cats followed them. Back to the other group in front of the TV, all had ugly expressions on their faces while continuing to watch the news. Son of a bitch, Jean Liwei cursed under his breath. Iris squeezed his hand, silently agreeing with him. She glanced at her friend and saw the betrayed expression on Jiang Yingyu's face. Still, Iris was pleased that Jiang Yingyu wasn't crying for Long Hui unlike before. It was good that her friend had finally realized that Long Hui wasn't worth even a drop of her tears. The man had the audacity to accuse Jiang Yingyu of cheating with Lin Yihan when he was actually the one who cheated first. What scum! Assured that Jiang Yingyu looked fine, Iris turned to her darling beside him and asked in a curious tone, Is this eldest brother's work? It should be, Jean Liwei replied. I think I remember hearing that he hired a private detective a few days ago. He didn't ask for your help. No. Eldest brother is the type who tries to solve his own problems by himself first. It's only when everything fails that he'll ask me or our other brothers for assistance. Actually, it's not only him. All of us brothers are like this. She nodded. It's quite impressive that the private detective he hired was able to dig all this evidence in just a few days. He works fast, he said. I'm faster, she replied, pursing her lips. I can uncover all of these and more in just a couple of hours, maybe even faster because I have ketchup. The corners of his mouth lifted into a proud, doting smile. I know. My wife is the best. She couldn't help but smile, too, and also didn't correct him when he referred to her as his wife. They would marry in a few weeks, anyway. She would become his wife and he her husband soon enough. Let's sit back and just watch this time, he added. Eldest brother can handle this well enough without our help. I'm sure that he'll be able to clear not only his own name and reputation but Jiang Yingyu's as well, so don't worry. Besides, we don't have the time to constantly worry about others' problems at the moment. We have a wedding to finish planning, not to mention that both of us are still busy with a mountain of work commitments for the remainder of the year. 
she sighed at his reminder of their work obligations. Indeed, both of their schedules were filled almost to the brim. If they didn't make it a point of keeping at least one day a week completely free, they wouldn't be able to spend any quality time together at all. Despite this, Iris loved keeping herself busy with work, especially with her music and companies. It made her feel gloriously alive with a sense of purpose, something she lacked in her past life. Thanks to Jean Liwei, she was improving on how to maintain the right work-life balance. He was also extremely busy running the country's number one company, and yet he would drop everything and rush to her whenever she needed him. His love and commitment to her made her fall in love with him more deeply, comma. Their lovey-dovey segue was interrupted by a furious, booming voice. Grandpa Lu, who had been keeping unusually quiet since the news story shifted its focus to Long Hui, finally exploded. Gah! In you my girl, how could you fall in love with such a loser? I want to know. The only good thing that Dum Dum did was provide the sperm to make my cute beloved great-grandbaby, little Jun Jun. I must admit that he has excellent ability in that area but that's where it ends. Did his balls got cut off? Because a real man wouldn't do those stupid things to the mother of his child. Humph. This old man is so angry. Jiang Yin Yu didn't know how to respond to Grandpa Lu, so she remained quiet instead. She looked down at her lap and clenched her hands into tight fists. On the other side of the room, little June was startled by his great-grandfather's angry, booming voice. Ha! Huh. Ampa Lu! Dom quickly distracted the child once again and managed to prevent little June from running back where Grandpa Lu and the others sat in front of the TV. When little June became absorbed by another cartoon, Dom quickly carried him out of the living area so that the adults could talk freely without needing to worry about the child. Popcorn followed them out while Ice Cream stayed and headed straight to her mommy's lap. Iris, Jean Liwei, and Jiang Yingyu allowed Grandpa Lu to vent his anger long after the news program already moved on to another story. Watching the old man get angry at Long Hui for betraying her, Jiang Yingyu felt better. When Grandpa Lu finally calmed down, Iris suggested that they play a game of chess to take their minds off of Long Hui until lunch time. However, before the butler could set up the chessboard and the pieces, Jean Liwei's phone dinged. It was a message from Ketchup. Hi Daddy. I saw all of you interested in the news about Uncle Yihan and that good-for-nothing scumbag Long Hui, so I compiled the latest news updates online for you. Meow. Iris peeked at his phone and they read the first headline together. Mao Chuyue bought Deputy CFO Long Huey's love in exchange for 5% Long Industries shares. You're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 671 Money Over Love the first article was about the Mao family providing financial assistance to Long Hui so that he could purchase 5% Long Industries shares under his name to add to the two. 5% he already owned before for a total of 7. 5% shares. This was the same shares that Xiao Yu failed to purchase for Iris due to the seller's prejudice against her caused by her past reputation as a good for nothing, self important, spoiled brat. The article also implied that the real reason Long Hui and Jiang Yingyu separated was not because she cheated on him with Lin Yihan but because he wanted more Long Industries shares and Mao Chuyue's family could give it to him. His final decision was to abandon Jiang Yingyu and essentially sell himself to Mao Chuyue in exchange for the 5% shares. Long Hui was the one who chose money over love, not Jiang Yingyu. After skimming through the article, Iris and Jean Liwei clicked on the next one. It was a tabloid story consisting primarily of intimate still photos of Long Hui and Mao Chuyue taken from property surveillance cameras from cafes, restaurants, parking lots, and most damning of all, hotels. The date stamps on some of the still photos were from when Long Hui and Jiang Yingyu were still engaged. Granted, those photos were from cafes and restaurants, not hotels, so there was no concrete proof at this point that the two had sexual relations, but it was already apparent that Mao Chuyue was already acting clingy to Long Hui even then. 
she could be seen always hugging his arm and pressing her watermelon-sized plastic boobs to his side. Long Huey's expression didn't show any emotion but it was a fact that allowed the woman to press herself against him in an intimate manner when he was still engaged to another woman during that time. These photos were a huge contrast to the evidence Lin Yihan provided earlier where it showed in the hospital and mall surveillance videos that he and Jiang Yingyu kept an appropriate distance from each other at all times. The other photos of Long Hui and Mao Chuyue were taken after he and Jiang Yingyu separated. He was already engaged to Mao Chuyue at this point. They were shown engaging in intimate acts such as hugging and kissing at hotel lobbies and hallways and even parking lots. The tabloid promised that they're more scandalous photos but they were unable to post online because they couldn't pass censorship rules. This statement only fired up the reader's imaginations as to what kind of scandalous photos were not shown. Iris reached over and scrolled down to the bottom of the story for the reader's comments. As expected, the majority was condemning Long Hui. Ah, they're from the Slippers Army, Iris mumbled after seeing a number of mighty slipper emojis in the comments. Ketchup had informed her a few days ago that Joe Mayer planned on organizing a group, mostly from the Slippers Army, to head to the courthouse in order to support Jiang Yingyu, who the Black Stars remembered as Iris' former bodyguard and now friend. And also, they planned to attack Long Hui by throwing stinky mighty slippers at him, especially after the audio and video evidence of him being violent towards Jiang Yingyu in front of their son was revealed. Fortunately, Feng Wang and her friends, the other posh ladies managed to stop Zhou Mayer in time. They reasoned that it wouldn't be good for Iris' image if her official fan club, the Black Stars, got involved in the custody case which was already receiving wide media coverage, comma. Iris was relieved upon hearing about it and silently thanked Phone Wan and the other madams. However, it wasn't because she worried about her image but because she didn't want her fans to get into trouble with the law, especially because the group originally planned on attacking Long Hui in front of the courthouse. Back to the present, she and Jean Liwei continued reading the other news articles and the readers' comments. Public opinion was finally shifting to favor Jiang Yingyu and Lin Yihan. People began drawing their own conclusions with the most popular one being that Long Hui made the fake cheating allegations against Jiang Yingyu and Lin Yihan in order to hide his own affair with his current fiancée, Mao Chuyue. It could be seen that Lin Yihan's actions was already beginning to bear fruit. Although public opinion was generally still mixed at this point, those who felt confused about who to believe were leaning more towards Lin Yihan because first of all, he looked gentle and trustworthy. Allowing himself to be interviewed and telling his own side of the story with his own voice on TV was working wonders. Second of all, the fact that he was an agricultural tycoon and was actually wealthier and more influential than Deputy CFO Long Hui and yet still acted polite and humble won him a lot of brownie points from the viewers. He wasn't flashy at all and looked like a regular person. If the news didn't reveal that he was actually rich, then the people wouldn't even know that he was the one producing the food they were eating every single day. Third of all, a few shooting athletes, both active and retired, came forward to voice out their support for him. Their appearance prompted some to dig up Lin Yihan's past achievements as a pro shooting athlete who won some national competitions before. If he didn't retire in order to focus on his agricultural business, he would have competed in the Olympics and perhaps even brought honor to the country. Right now, he was a licensed coach who sometimes mentored young aspiring shooting athletes. His students and their parents also stepped forward to vouch for his good moral character. His name and reputation which were dragged through the mud during the cheating allegations were quickly becoming squeaky clean again. In extension, Jiang Yingyu's own name and reputation were also undergoing the same cleansing. All thanks to Lin Yihan, you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 672 Out to Get You The next day, the stock prices of Long Industries crashed overnight. Long Hui was summoned for an emergency meeting with all the executives, board of directors, and other important shareholders. He knew that he was in trouble, especially after what they were saying about him on the news. 
His current image and reputation were in tatters after the cheating allegations shifted from Lin Yihan and Jiang Inyue to him and Mao Chuyue instead. A hysterical Mao Chuyue called him this morning, yelling and crying because she was also being bashed everywhere just like him. She was accused of being a homewrecker. Fortunately, he was able to calm her down by promising to comfort her with a night-long fuck session tonight before heading to the company. He almost didn't want to go to work but had no choice because he didn't want to lose his position to compete in the battle for succession. Upon arriving at the company, he was welcomed by looks of judgment and contempt. His jaw tightened as anger filled him, but he controlled himself and walked faster while looking straight ahead and not meeting anyone's gaze. Good morning, Deputy CFO Long, some people still greeted him. To him, however, it sounded like they were mocking him, so he only nodded at them stiffly with a cold expression before walking away even faster. Wow! What a jerk! And I thought so highly of him before. How the mighty has fallen! Yes, he's President Long's eldest son but it turns out that he's not automatically given shares. He has to buy the shares but can't afford it, so he pimps himself out to a rich woman. What's the difference between him and a gigolo? It's no wonder that he lost custody of his son. I feel so sorry for Miss Jiang. She really suffered the most during the custody battle just because she came from a normal background and got pregnant outside marriage. To be honest, I also condemned Miss Jiang before but now that I know that it was actually Deputy CFO Long who cheated first and did her wrong, I really feel bad for her. It's so unfair that she had to suffer fake cheating allegations with an innocent man when she was actually the one who was cheated on. Poor woman. These people spoke in whispers but Long Hui still managed to hear them. He wanted to lash out at them, to scold them, to punish them for badmouthing him. Endure, he told himself. Focus on your goal, to succeed father and become the next head of the clan, and most importantly, Long Industries. Once you successfully obtain your goal, all of these nobodies who dare disrespect you today will one day need to bow their heads down to you. Then you can kick them out of the company. He immediately felt better after his pep talk to himself. Ignoring the employees gossiping about him, he hurried to the conference room upstairs, encountering some of the board members and executives along the way. Most of them still greeted him like usual but he could see that they were looking at him differently. Some ignored him completely, while a handful of his closest colleagues reached out to him and tried to console him. I'm all right. Please don't worry, he reassured them, trying to present a confident front. I saw your father, the president, earlier. His expression didn't look good. Scary. I hope that you prepared a good explanation today. I'll try to help you out as much as I can in the meeting later. Just be ready because you're gonna have it tough. Comma. Long Hui took a deep breath before nodding. He managed to look calm on the outside but the truth was he was shaking on the inside. Eldest brother, how are you, a familiar voice greeted him from behind. He turned and saw his half-brother, Long Jian, looking fresh and polished in his crisp business suit. Long Jian just arrived together with the COO. Long Hui greeted the COO before his brother. I'm all right. Are you really? I was overcome with worry when I saw the news. Long Jian's tone was filled with brotherly worry but Long Hui saw mocking in his eyes. Long Hui gritted his teeth but forced himself to smile, knowing that his brother was the COO's current protege. Thank you, brother. Don't worry too much about me. Long Hui wanted this half-brother of his to leave him alone, finding him more and more annoying by the day because Long Jian always performed all of his assigned tasks well, even going so far as to achieve results beyond what was expected of him. The COO couldn't stop praising him. Even Long Tingfei couldn't hide the approval and pride in his eyes whenever he looked at his second son. However, Long Jian didn't leave him alone. I heard that there are some board members who are demanding your resignation. Please be careful, eldest brother. They're out to get you, Long Jian whispered to him. To others, like the COO who was listening to their conversation, it sounded like Long Jian was giving a kind warning to his brother. 
But Long Hui knew that Long Jian was enjoying the precarious situation he was in. Thanks. I'll keep that in mind, he forced himself to say with a smile, only barely managing to stop himself from hissing. After a few minutes of faking a close brotherly bond in front of the COO, Long Jian and his mentor, the COO, finally left him alone. Then he saw the two elders, Long Jufang and Long Meng, who just arrived. The elders were also shareholders so they had the right to attend the meeting. Long Jufang snorted in derision when their eyes met before heading to a group of other shareholders. On the other hand, Long Meng gave him an encouraging smile and approached him. You're your father's eldest son, so don't worry about being fired. You should be fine, she assured him. I heard that some board members want my resignation, he said, finally showing a hint of anxiety to his allied elder, you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 673 Unexpected Appearance Long Meng didn't reply immediately but that was enough for Long Hui to confirm that Long Jian told the truth earlier about some board members wanting his resignation. His anxiety intensified until he almost felt like suffocating. Calm down, young Master Hui, Long Meng told him in a low but firm voice. You'll be fine. We have our own allies in this meeting, you'll see. He nodded and took a few deep breaths until he finally managed to calm himself again. Indeed, the most important thing for him to do at the moment was to keep his composure. He needed to demonstrate to everyone that he had the ability to keep a cool head in times of overwhelming pressure which was an extremely important requirement to become the head of the company. Everyone filed inside the large conference room and took their seats. The meeting was scheduled to start in five minutes but not everyone was present yet. There were still people arriving. Long Hui sat between Long Meng and his superior, the CFO. Directly opposite them sat Long Jian and the COO. They sat close to the head of the table where his father would be sitting once he arrived. Soon, everyone had arrived except for the president CEO, Long Tingfei. Long Hui took this time to mentally practice how he was going to defend himself against the attacks he expected to be thrown at him shortly. Two minutes before the scheduled time for the meeting, the door opened and Long Tingfei entered. His right-hand man, Chao Guang, followed closely behind him like always. However, it was the unexpected figure walking beside Long Tingfei that surprised many in the conference room. Long Hui's expression immediately turned ugly when he saw who it was. It took a few seconds before he was able to smooth out his expression to an impassive one. Fortunately, Almost everyone's attention was on the unexpected new arrival so they didn't notice his unbecoming expression. However, Long Jian noticed and smirked before he, too, smoothed out his own expression. Good morning, President Long. Long Tingfei nodded. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Xiolan. Long Jian was the first one to greet Iris who arrived with their father. She flashed everyone her brightest smile, almost blinding them with her breathtaking beauty. It didn't matter if it was male or female. They all found themselves affected by her. She looked fresh and glowing in a vibrant violet business dress. The dress itself was simple and conservative, yet when Iris wore it, it transformed into a high-fashion runway showpiece. Her accessories were minimal and her high heels were lower than usual. Her entire outfit was very business-appropriate, but for some reason, it felt like she was dressed to perform in a grand concert. Good morning, big brother Jian, she greeted back. Oh, right. I should call you Deputy COO Long when we're in the company. Please excuse me. Long Jian waved a hand. Big brother Jian is fine. There's no need to be so formal between us. We're siblings, after all. Yes, we are. Comma. Long Hui clenched his hands under the table as he watched his half-brother and half-sister chatting with each other and acting as if they were very close. What graded him was that the two were acting as if he didn't exist when he was the eldest brother. What is the young miss doing here? Long Meng whispered beside him, so that nobody other than him could hear her. 
she's also a shareholder and has the right to attend this meeting, he replied, immediately knowing the answer despite being surprised at her sudden, unexpected appearance just a few seconds ago. Ah, right. I've forgotten that she owns 5%. Long Meng glanced down and saw his clenched hands under the table. Young master, please don't worry too much. The young miss might be a shareholder but what does she know about the inner workings of the company? She doesn't understand the work culture here, so she only holds very little power on her own. She won't be able to do anything against you here. You're right. Iris went on to greet the other people. Most greeted her back with politeness for the reason that she was a shareholder, if not because she was the president CEO's daughter. Some, however, didn't bother to hide their displeasure at her presence. They were the old-fashioned people who still held negative impressions of her from her past reputation as an unreasonable, selfish, conceited, spoiled brat. The previous owner of the 5% shares who refused to sell to her, eventually choosing to sell to Long Hui instead, belonged to this particular group. Iris' expression didn't change. She didn't give a whit about these people. Two looked extremely excited to the point that they were almost visibly vibrating with happiness. Iris tilted her head to the side, feeling confused by their reaction because she didn't remember meeting these two people before. What she didn't know was that they were actually black stars, so of course, it was only expected that they were soaring in exhilaration upon meeting their boss Iris, their queen goddess, in the flesh. If they weren't in an important business meeting right now, they would have already fangirled and fanboyed over Iris and asked her to sign autographs and take pictures with them before bragging about the unforgettable experience to their fellow black stars online. In fact, they were already making plans on doing exactly that after the meeting. Finally, Iris greeted Long Hui and Elder Long Meng, saving them for the last. Others didn't bother thinking too much about the order she greeted everyone, assuming that she did it randomly. To Long Hui and Long Meng, however, they believed that she did it intentionally to mock them and tell them that they were at the bottom rung of importance to her. Well, they were half correct. Iris indeed greeted everyone at random but left Long Hui and Long Meng for last because she didn't want to ruin her mood so quickly and affect her interactions with the others, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 674 Good Skill to Have Xiulan, sit beside your brother Jian, Long Tingfei said before taking his seat at the head of the table. Iris obeyed and sat beside Long Jian, not noticing the disappointed expression on Long Jufang's face who initially intended on inviting her to sit beside him instead. Long Tingfei checked his wristwatch and announced, It's time. Let's start the meeting. Everyone knew why the meeting was called today, so nobody beat around the bush. Our company's stock prices crashed overnight. We need to discuss strategies on how to recover as soon as possible, the CFO said. Isn't it because our deputy CFO did something scandalous that our stock prices crashed, a board member said in a sardonic tone. He's the one who caused the problem in the first place so he should be the one to take responsibility and solve it. And what do you suggest my deputy do to solve the problem, the CFO asked. Simple. Present his resignation. I object. Long Meng glared at the board member. What a ridiculous suggestion. Ridiculous? This is the simplest and the most effective solution. I guarantee that our stock prices will recover quickly once he resigns. Want to bet? You. Long Meng was furious. Grand Aunt Meng, please calm down. Now it was Long Huey's turn to whisper calming words to the elder. The table erupted in great noise as people started talking over each other. One group supported the board member's idea and demanded for Long Huey's resignation while another group was in support of him and tried to defend him from the attackers. A neutral group tried to mediate and calm everyone down but to no avail. Enough. Long Tingfei banged his hand on the table, instantly stopping the ruckus. Then he turned his strict eyes on his eldest son. Deputy CFO Long Hui, do you have anything to say for yourself? Yes. President Long. 
I do. Please allow me to explain myself. All right. Go ahead. Comma. Long Hui stood up and headed to the presentation area. He was aware that all eyes were on him like stabbing knives. However, he managed to keep his composure and look calm on the outside. His father was looking at him with an unreadable expression as always, but Long Hui could sense his father's disappointment in him. Next were his half-siblings. Long Jian managed to look concerned for him, effectively presenting himself as a good brother to those observing. Iris, on the other hand, wore an unreadable expression very similar to their father's. But Long Hui could imagine the real mocking expressions hiding beneath their fake masks. He took a few deep breaths and finally started speaking. Before anything else, I would like to apologize for all the inconvenience my actions have caused the company and all of you. First order of business was a heartfelt apology in order to garner sympathy so that they would be more receptive to his explanation and lenient on his current unfortunate situation. He was able to maintain a delicate balance of remorse for his carelessness and determination not to let it happen again and become a better person. Great acting skills. It's making me a little envious. I have to take acting classes just to improve, but look at him. He's a natural, Iris commented in a low voice. Long Jian's mouth twitched. Fortunately, he was able to stop himself from laughing out loud. Little sister, all of us here didn't get to where we are today without learning some sort of acting skills. It's one of the most important tacit skills needed to climb the corporate ladder and to keep one's position. Oh. Really? So you're good in acting, too? Of course. Not to brag but I'm an excellent actor. Better than Long Hui. Remember that I'm not a legitimate child like you or him, so I have to work a hundred times harder just to get to where I am today. Acting skills is very important in order for me to reverse the preconceived notions of people about me being an illegitimate son of the company president. She nodded. Hearing Long Jian say it like that, Iris thought that he was actually quite an impressive man. After her rebirth as Iris Long, she never felt completely at ease with Long Jian because her intuition told her that he wasn't exactly how he appeared to be. There was cunningness behind his handsome smile. Another thing was that he had a horrible, ill-behaved mother who often got into fights in public, particularly with Wei Lan. However, they had become more comfortable chatting with each other ever since they allied together when Long Jian bowed his head to her and Jin Li Wei and asked them to help his mother, Zhu Ning, who was currently still in police custody after being framed for the mall bombing. It was actually Long Jian who informed Iris about the meeting today and urged her to come in order to start their plans of kicking Long Hui out of the battle of succession. In addition to this, Long Jian had already started feeding her important information about the inner workings of the company. Hmm. If that's the case, then I guess I need to really improve my acting skills because I now have my own companies, she said. Yes. It's a good skill to have, Long Jian replied. Iris thought more about it and realized that indeed some acting skills were needed in business. Even her tyrannical darling needed to be on his best behavior when meeting fellow CEOs of other multinational companies, even when he didn't like them. She remembered Grandpa Lu complaining about it during one of their lessons. I once punched a CEO in the face back in the days because he was a complete asshole who harassed female secretaries. Our company lost billions in a potential partnership because of it but what do I care? Why should I pretend to like someone when I don't just to get ahead? Why? I want to know. Your grandfather Gene, I wish you met him, he would have loved you too, always called me a hothead. Bah! I'm not a hothead. I'm just true to myself. You're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 675 Proposed Solution That's why I left all the people matters to your grandfather Jean because he said that I'm no good with it. That I'm too temperamental, too shameless. Ha! Of course you have to be shameless to make lots of money. But don't get me wrong, Shulan my girl. 
I'm not saying that your grandfather Jean kissed everyone's asses to make connections with important people. That would be funny if he did but he didn't. That scoundrel looked so proper and upright but was actually a sly fox inside. Bahaha. He was the most cunning person your grandpa Lou knows in my entire life. We always get the best business deals because of his god-level craftiness. And now I dumped Gene Corporation to your leeway so that this old man can enjoy his retired life having lots of fun and waiting for you pinheads to make me lots of great-grandbabies. You're all so slow. What's taking you so long? I want to know. Leeway my boy is also good at handling people matters which I hate, bah. He's very similar to his grandfather Gene in many aspects. In fact, that boy is also a sly fox inside, so you better be careful, my girl. Oh wait. Too late. You already fell for his trap. Bahahaha. Iris couldn't help but smile remembering Grandpa Lou's booming voice as he complained about this aspect in business which he hated, dealing with people he didn't like. Although she had no clue what the old man meant by his last sentence about her falling into Jean Leeway's trap, she didn't mind because she liked listening to his stories of Grandfather Jean and also about her darling. Her attention returned to the meeting just as Long Hui was finishing his very well-rehearsed yet natural-sounding defense of himself. Basically, he admitted that it was negligence on his part that he allowed the custody case of his son to become so public that it began to affect Long Industries' image, but cleverly insinuated that the media attention was due to his relation with his sister Iris Long who was a famous celebrity. He said it in an almost careless way, as if it was just an afterthought and not deliberate at all. Indeed, a natural actor. If he enters showbiz, he might even win a Best Actor award, Iris muttered, making Long Jian fight a grin. His acting was even more impressive because the old-fashioned group who didn't think highly of her looked like they believed him. They now turned their accusing eyes on Iris. She ignored them. He's blaming you, little sister. Are you angry? Long Jian asked while looking very entertained. No. I already expected that he'll try something like this because that's the kind of person he is. In his own eyes, he's innocent. If something goes wrong, it's other people's fault. The two stopped talking because the COO quietly reprimanded Long Jian, comma. In the end, Long Hui was able to move some people with his heartfelt speech. There were a number of men in the room who experienced something similar to him, separated with a lover and tried to fight for a child's custody but lost. Family situations like this were always messy, so they could relate to him. Long Hui also defended the cheating allegations between him and Mao Chuyue, insisting that it was untrue. His maternal family, the Zhengs, were close to the Maos. He only interacted with Mao Chuyue in a brotherly capacity when he was still engaged with Jiang Yinyu. But when they separated, Mao Chuyue comforted him during his painful heartbreak, eventually causing him to fall for her. According to him, it also wasn't true that the Maos bought him in exchange for the 5% Long Industries shares he recently acquired. He reasoned that Mao Chuyue insisted on helping him even when he declined her offer numerous times until she eventually managed to persuade him. I know that everything looks bad now and I'm sorry for that, but as Long Industries Deputy CFO, and also as the President CEO's eldest son, I will do everything that I can to solve the problem of our company's stock prices crashing. My resignation is not the answer. In fact, it's the worst thing to do in this situation because it'll only signal to everyone that we're admitting defeat. I humbly suggest that the best course of action is to work together as a team, as family because that's what we are, in order to remedy our current problem. I'm ready to work day and night every day of the week until we solve this and our company's stock prices recover. Long Meng clapped her hands. Long Huey supporters and allies followed suit. However, most chose not to clap because they wanted to gauge Long Tingfei's position first in this matter. It was difficult for them to know what their company head was thinking based on his expression which remained unreadable. Go back to your seat, Deputy CFO Long Hui, Long Tingfei finally spoke again. Long Hui obeyed and returned beside Long Meng who gave him an encouraging smile. 
He also felt hopeful because his father's tone didn't sound like he was about to fire him. Perhaps he was also able to move his father with his speech. He was hoping he did. The conference room descended into silence as everyone waited for Long Tingfei to speak first. I agree that Deputy CFO Long Huey's resignation is not the best course of action in this situation, he said. Long Hui released a big sigh of relief. Elder Long Meng also did the same thing. But he still played a big part in causing our current predicament, Long Tingfei continued. So he will be duly punished. I'll hand out his punishment later but for now, we should all think of solutions on how to make our stock prices recover as soon as possible. People began talking again as they offered different solutions, but most of them were shot down as ineffective. A hand rose up. Go ahead, Deputy COO Long Jian, Long Tingfei said. What's your proposed solution? My suggestion is simple. Let my sister, the celebrity Iris Long, do her magic. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 676 What kind of brother are you? We are having a serious business discussion here that will affect the fate of our company. It's not the time for making jokes. Long Meng rebuked Long Jian. She never treated him kindly because of his illegitimate status. It wasn't only him. Long Jinjing also suffered the same ill treatment from Long Meng and the other elders, including Long Jufang who was now supporting Iris but only because she was a legitimate child. Others nodded, agreeing with Long Meng, but there were a handful of people whose eyes lit up upon finally realizing what Long Jian meant. Included in these sharp people were the two secret black stars. They looked at Iris in excitement. It was already obvious by their smiling expressions that they would wholeheartedly support whatever Long Jian was about to propose because it was related to their amazing boss Iris. They almost cheered out loud before controlling themselves upon remembering that they were in an important business meeting. Grand Aunt Meng, Long Jian said. Long Meng snorted, not liking that he was calling her Grand Aunt. For her, he wasn't qualified to be family and therefore had no right to call her as Grand Aunt. However, she didn't correct him because they were in front of Long Tingfei who everyone in the clan knew was protective of all his children, legitimate or not, even though he wasn't an outwardly affectionate person. Long Jian ignored the elder's obvious disdain towards him and continued speaking. I'm not making jokes. I'm serious about my suggestion to allow my sister Shilan, or as the rest of the country knows her, the popular celebrity Iris Long, to help solve our company's current crisis. Explain, Long Tingfei said in a strict tone, yet there was also underlying encouragement in his voice. It seemed that Long Tingfei already had an idea of what Long Jian's proposal was all about but still chose to ask for the benefit of those who hadn't realized it yet like Long Meng. Indeed, Long Tingfei was an astute businessman. He wasn't the president CEO of Long Industries for nothing. President Long and also everyone, Long Jian spoke in a clear voice. My sister, Iris Long, is not just a simple shareholder in our company. Please remember that she's also the appointed celebrity brand ambassador of Long Industries. She hasn't been very active in her duty yet, but haven't we signed a few promising new clients as soon as it was announced that she became our brand ambassador? They reached out to us to make a business deal but introduced themselves as Iris Long's fans, that's why they chose to partner with us in the first place. Even outside our company, my sister's endorsements are all very successful and at this rate, I'm sure that she'll become one of the top celebrity endorsers in the country by next year. This only proves that we made an excellent decision to appoint her as our brand ambassador. My point is that we should make use of Iris Long star power to turn our current predicament around. Why did our stock prices crash in the first place? It wasn't because of a failure we did as a company but because of Deputy CFO Long Huey's, M, shall we say increasingly, unpleasant, image in the media these days. Long Huey's composed expression cracked and Long Jian singled him out by name in front of everyone. He glared at his half-brother but was ignored as Long Jian continued explaining his proposal. 
In short, the main cause of our current problem is image. Our company's image has been tarnished alongside Deputy CFO Long Huey's, not just because he holds a high position but also because he's the eldest son of our president CEO. If you think about it, it's not surprising that our stock prices crashed because people are going to think that everyone in the company, especially the president, is tolerating Deputy CFO Long Huey's unpleasant behaviors just because he's the company head son. You. Enough. Stop spouting all that nonsense. Long Meng angrily interrupted Long Jian. Didn't you listen to the young master's explanation just now? He already said that not everything being reported in the media about him is true. Stop targeting young master Hui. What kind of brother are you? Long Jian's eyes turned a degree colder. The elder never acknowledged him as part of the Long family, and yet she was demanding him to act like a brother to her young master Hui whenever it suited her. Comma. Earlier, Long Jian was the one who looked entertained when Long Hui cleverly blamed Iris for his current problems caused by the media. But now, it was Iris who felt entertained watching Long Hui glaring at Long Jian while Long Meng was scolding him in front of everyone for targeting his own brother. She found it funny that the two and their allies were always trying to find fault in her and Long Jian during this meeting in order to shift a part of the blame away from Long Hui when it was clear as day that he was the one who fucked up first. Iris had a strong urge to munch on popcorn and enjoy the entertaining show in front of her. Madam Long, my deputy is only stating facts as he should. It's true that it was Deputy CFO Long's mistakes that caused our company's stock prices to crash overnight. Please take a moment to view our current situation with a logical mind instead of letting your emotions take over you, madam. I know some people in your clan have issues with my deputy but I request that you don't bring that here in the company. Family issues have no place in business, the COO intervened and defended Long Jian. If not for the fact that Long Meng was older than him, he probably would have already harshly scolded her. Long Meng felt humiliated but wisely shut her mouth and didn't argue with the COO. It was because the COO was the next most powerful person in Long Industries after Long Tingfei while she was only a small-time shareholder, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories.